I bet. What's up, YouTube? Um, so I haven't played this game in forever. But we're going to play through all of Robert's storyline. Or at least most of it. I don't know how long I'm streaming for, but let's do it. All right. Robert Small. We about to find out if he really is. All right. Uh, <laughs> apparently this this storyline, if you play through it and you don't sleep with him in the beginning, it gets heavy and real. So we're going to do it. Dad tip number five. Everyone needs to know how to use power tools. Robert was nice, a little odd, but nice and ruggedly handsome. We should hang out. I type out a message to him on dad book. What's up, YouTube? We love a YouTuber. Oh, God, Taylor, get out of here. <laughs> hey, Robert, good seeing you again at the uh, at the cookout. Want to grab a drink? I sit there for a couple of seconds, hoping he'll message me back. Hey, it says that he read my message. I anxiously, I anxiously wait for a response. Let's watch cat videos on the internet. I start down a rabbit hole of cat videos and Robert quickly vanishes from my mind. I didn't realize how long I've been doing this, but by the time I watch maybe my 30th cat video, Robert pops back into my head. I jump back over to dad book to see if he responded yet. Nothing. Well, I guess the guy's busy. I might as well make the best of my day. Nope, that's not how you spell. Nope, nope, nope. autocorrect. I spelled it right the first time. There you go. I get up, walk downstairs, and turn on the TV. Uh, fucking history channel. Ooh, naked and afraid, catching the deadliest ancient aliens is... Uh... I'm sorry, what the fuck? I'm so cold. I'm so scared. At this rate, I don't think we're going to catch these aliens by day 50. I'm having trouble following this. Ancient astronaut theorists predict that being naked makes you ten times more likely to find ancient aliens. Some suggest that aliens are fascinated with human physique, most notably the butt. Okay, I'm back in. <laughs> what the fuck? Sorry, I got a text. Ironic, you're watching cat videos on Dream Daddy. I don't really even watch cat videos in general. I just look at Hamilton. Uh, okay, I'm back in. I'm back in as well because I finished texting my friend. I lose several hours to whatever the hell that was. Sighing, I get up and walk around the house. My stomach grumbles. Time for lunch. Huh. Well, I guess it's time for old Chef Fake to cook a gourmet delicacy. All right, what are we eating? I walk over to the refrigerator and open the door. Oh, it's Sally. What's good, Allie? Uh, microwave some eggs? Ew, make a sandwich. I make a sandwich in its entirety while standing there. Who needs plates? The sandwich. A lost art. I admire my work for a second before I clumsily drop the entire thing on the floor. Fucking idiot. Oh, shit. And Sky is here? Holy fuck. Yo, uh... Yo, gamers, there's three real girls in this chat. No bamboozle. No no fakes. Except Xander is fake. No! I look around and remember that Amanda's not home. This is still good. Five second rules, right? I reassemble my sandwich, peeling pickles off the floor. Oh, no, don't take the pickles. Like, the, everything else is fine, but not the pickles. Wait, I'm a wreck. I finish my snack and walk around the house some more. Bored. When's Amanda coming home? Oh, I just remembered something. When we were packing up the old house, we found an old basketball hoop that would hang off a door. It would really bring the living room together. I wonder where to put it. Damn, I should get them too. I need to buy them now before they sold out. LMA. Oh, God. Guys, I'm broke and I don't have a job right now. I'm also paying rent, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to fucking buy these tickets. So. Y'all can go. Uh, and then just send me snaps, so it'll be like I'm actually there. I spend a couple of min a little minutes poking around the new place until I find it after installing it above one of the doors. Uh, 
All right, Taylor. Thanks for dropping in. I'll catch you later. Uh, so, uh, I'm ready to dunk. Come on and slam! And take a leap from the free throw line and rocket that sucker down the net. The crowd goes wild. And welcome to the jam. I pull up from the three-point line, breaking ankles and sinking a fadeaway. And I forgot the rest of the words to this song. I went to my new McCaffrey's, and two people who work at my old store were there. Huh? What? What? That's crazy. No look behind the back shot, uh, the back hook shot. Everyone's on their feet. I haven't seen them in years. I'm sad. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying, like, they were just at your old McCaffrey's, and now they're there. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. Something, something, space jam. Dad? I turn around to see Amanda standing in the doorway. Her eyes are a little puffy, almost as if she's been crying. Hey, Amanda Panda, you all right? I'm fine. What are you doing? I, uh, found the hoop, and I'm taking it to the hole. <laughs> Pass me the rock. Uh, put up a br uh, laser the ball to Amanda. Wait, what? I'm so confused, Allie. I lead the league. I lead the league in blocks. Set the record for rebounds in my rookie year. Think you can handle this? What's a rebound? Oh, uh, when someone misses a shot. Yes. Just kidding. I saw them last December, but my ex sort of ruined it. Redemption. Fucking redemption. Let's go. Amanda zigzags past me and tips a layup into the hoop. Art of War, bitches. Amanda, language. Sun Tzu didn't care about language. I would argue that Sun Tzu cared very much about language. So once you write something as timeless as the Art of War, then you're allowed to swear. Amanda sticks out her tongue and dunks for another two points. Seriously, though. Are you okay? You look like you've been crying. Uh. Oh, dude, I'm cool. I just felt like this really cute dog on the way home, and it let me pet its belly. I couldn't contain my emotions. Uh, are you sure that's all you're upset about? If there's, you know, anything going on, I just want you to know that I'm here for you, and I'll always be here for you. Whether you need a shoulder to cry on or a strong dad to go kick someone's butt, I'm only a phone call away. Thanks, Popsicle. Popsicle! Popsicle! I appreciate that. But I'm fine, really. I'm unconvinced, but I'll stop badgering her about it. I'm sure she'll tell me when she's ready. Oh, okay, just making sure. Maybe you should be less concerned with my face and more concerned with the full court press. Amanda and I play ball for a little longer, then we cook dinner together. We managed not to almost burn down the house this time. Afterward, Amanda and I dig into a carton of ice cream over an episode of Chopped Toddler, to Chopped Toddler Tournament. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my character's eyes. What you have in front of you is a molecularly deconstructed sweet potato with brown sugar demi glass with cream fresh, of course. This is Larry HR baby food. The toddler immediately bursts into tears. Are we bad people for watching this? Yes. Hey, Allie. It's me. It's fucking, well, with black hair, but you know. Yes. Just then, my computer dings. Huh? What's that? Oh, you probably just got a message. Amanda and I walk over to the computer and check dad book. It's a message from Robert. You up? What you... We got a you up and a what you doing. Oh, we're getting the dick. What does that mean? What you doing? What am I doing? You're just chilling. In Cedar Rapids. Your IRL mustache isn't as bomb. I know. Fucking hello, Westfield, New Jersey? The Watcher! Westfield and Soft, what's good? I don't know this number. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll admit that his mustache is way better than mine. He's, well, he's better groomed than me. But that's my dream self as a dad. Uh, just chilling. It'll make you look cooler. A couple of moments pass by, another message pops up. Yes. Wanna grab a drink? Hey, that means he wants to hang out. I know what that means, Amanda. But isn't it's kinda late. <laughs> Come on, Pops, live a little. I am living. With ice cream. And traumatized toddlers. Huh. Well, it's your life, but I think you have a lot of you'd have a lot of fun tonight. You are trying to get to know the neighborhood better, aren't you? Uh, 
Um... Uh... Uh, fine. I type back a message to Robert, asking him for the details, and he tells me to meet him at Jim and Kim's, but owned and managed by Neil. Well, don't wait up for me. I never do. I throw on a nice jacket and run out the door. It's only a short walk to Jim and Kim's, and it's a beautiful night. Alright, I have to do my fucking Robert voice where I fucking pretend I smoked 8 million cigarettes. I walk into the bar and see the usual crowd of bar flies drinking beer and watching sports. I spot Robert at the back of the bar and wave hi as I walk over. Hey man, how's it going? Hey buddy. Ahoy there, Skipper. Robert and Mary are here. Uh-oh. I brought Mary along. Figured we need a drinking buddy. Gotta go to work. Love you both. Bye. Bye, Sky. Bye. Oh, man. I was excited to get to know Robert a little better, but now I have to deal with this weird married lady making passes at me. Don't look scared, kiddo. We're just having a drink. Yeah. Speaking of which, I think it's time for the first round. What are you having? Whiskey straight up. A dad after my own heart, huh? Robert, oh, we got all the emo emojis. Fuck it up. Robert orders three shots of whiskey and passes them between us. Here's to bad decisions and relaxed, relaxed moral values, fellas. What have I got myself into? We all knock back the shots. I almost choke on the whiskey as it burns down my throat. Holy hell, that was a kick. I look over at Robert and Mary, who seem like old pros at this. Robert grabs his jacket and throws it on. Let's get marching. What? The night's young, chief. Come on. We're bar hopping. Don't miss 420. Remind me then, please. Oh, all right. We leave the bar and start walking down the street. I still don't know this area of town very well, so I just follow Robert. So where are we headed? I... Irish, w <laughs> Irish, I were drinking. It's an Irish pub. A good pun is the whiskey to my heart. Give it a rest, buddy. Puns are the lowest form of humor, Xander. Try harder. No, I was talking to Sky. Well, you're reminding me anyway now, so thank you. Ouch, am I going to be the butt of the joke all night? Jesus, Mary. Put your fangs away for a second. Oh, he's, he's defending me. We walk into Irish I were drinking. The bar is pretty much the same as Jim and Kim's, except for the old-timey Irish memorabilia on the wall. Next round, what are you having? Uh, whiskey hasn't failed me yet. Let's do it. Robert orders three more glasses of whiskey, and we post up in a garish green booth. Mary slides in and sidles up next to Robert, which makes me breathe a sigh of relief. Oh. Let's sip on this one. Why don't we? Hey. Seat yourself. Mary immediately downs her shot in one gulp and burps loudly. Yay. That'll put hair on your chest. You are truly the paragon of grace and beauty. Mm. Mary grabs my drink and sips on it. Mm. Hey! Mm. Xander, be a dear and get us another round, will ya? Mm. I don't know how to process this evening at all. I get up and order another round of drinks from the bartender. As I head back, I see Mary and Robert having a lively conversation. Robert roars with laughter. I don't think I've ever seen the guy smile, let alone laugh. I take a seat across the booth from them and pass out the drinks. Aye. So Edith, Edith's kid snuck some pot brownies onto the table at the last bake sale, right? And I spot the little hemp sweatshirted gremlin in the act. So I go up to Edith with the baggie, and I'm about to tell her when all of a sudden she just freaks out on me. You're ruining the bake sale, she says. I should have been the PTA president. Your roots are bad. Blah, blah, blah. So what you do? I told her to have a brownie and that everything was going to be fine. <laughs> they both erupt in laughter. I politely follow with along with the story. She ate three. <laughs> More laughter. Okay, that was actually pretty funny. Hey. She called the cops and told them that time had stopped. Ugh. Mary looked directly at me. Do you smoke weed? What? Oh, you know, uh. the devil's lettuce. I. Uh. I have two more. Fla I have two big flat, blah, 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 big fat blunts in my purse right now. Want to blaze? Uh, it's not 420 though. You with the feds? I work hard for what I have, and no two-bit corner boy is going to drop the dime on me. So you take what you're pushing somewhere else, and I'll keep running my business the way I want to run it. What? Remember, you come at the king, you best not miss. Jesus, kid, dial it back. <laughs> Robert giggles helplessly. Oh, <laughs> you got it. I'm just kidding, cowboy. Mm -hmm. Lay off the kid, Mary. He might not be used to your kind of humor. Hey. Fine, fine. Hey. We sit around and sip our drinks, people watching and cracking jokes. After a little bit of time, I begin to warm up to Mary. Her jokes become much funnier and much less scary. But it seems like she's not going anywhere anytime soon. I just wanted some alone time with Robert. I wonder if I can get her to leave somehow. Could you get the next round? You trying to ditch me, pal? I... No, because if you're trying to ditch me, you can just tell me to scram. I... Just... No, no. It's fine. Xander wants some alone time with his new best buddy, Robert. Read you loud and clear. The wingman breaks formation to pursue their prey. Yeah. Now, if you fellas excuse me, Mary needs to sink her teeth into a helpless boy. Oh, boy. Go with God. Nice seeing you. Ugh. Deuces, nerds. <laughs> what the fuck? 
Mary gets up and saunters over to a younger looking guy at the bar. She grows on you. Hello. The roomie is in the room. Oh, oh, yeah. Roomie. I'm dating dads. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's entertaining, so ha. Huh? You're welcome. <laughs> are you wa are you watching more of uh, Bravest Warriors? Those live TV videos and I got stuck. What's live TV? They like arrest stupid people. And oh I my god. I got stuck in one of those like, oh, the next one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an hour. <laughs> valid. That's valid. Oh, wait, Allie, it's Ariel. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm going to paint a little bit. I'll paint this chair. Oh, do you want your chair? Uh, no, no, no. You can take it. Take it. This is your chair. I'm borrowing her chair. Ally says, hey -o. Take your chair. You're painting ham? Yeah. Maybe you can get him to actually model for you. No, I use the photo. That's like the lost cause. <laughs> so many mutuals. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, Ally's friend Sky was also in here. So she, they, were, they were talking about seeing Dance Gavin dance and trying to get me to go with them. Well... Uh, so many mutuals, I know. Does she, though? I feel like she kind of delights in making men suffer. Well, she does. But what about her and Joseph? What about them? You know, they're married? And she definitely tried to get in my pants out the other night. Don't. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I gestured to her across the bar where she's making goo-goo eyes at that young guy from before. She's, he looks like he's being held hostage. Hamilton's like, is there treats in this? Sorry, I'm looking for my towel. No, you're good. Hey. Oh, that's just the thing she does. She's harmless. Tell that to the boy she's hanging off of. Poor kid looks like he's seen war. Oh, look, he's modeling for you. Model. Well, look behind you. Look on your, look on your, your chair. Oh my god. <laughs> Robert lets out a hearty laugh. Hey, I got him to laugh. Oh man, you know I pegged you for one of those straight laced types. Oh, don't worry. I got pretty wild back in my day. Still got a little wild in you. I have a child I need to care for. There's so much wild in me. I get so wild I've got uh, a whole safari in here. Just really wild all the time. Oh, uh, he didn't like that. Uh-huh. Robert orders a couple more rounds of shots. I gulp. What am I getting myself into? They can go shot for shot. There's only one way to look cool here. I grab the shot closest to me and down it. Robert looks impressed. He takes a shot and knocks it back. That's one. So, what do I even talk about? He's so cool and he probably hates small talk. Uh, so how are things? I hate small talk. Okay. Hmm. Too many people, and this isn't necessarily you, but too many people think they have to fill the dead air with noise. Personally, I think they're afraid of silence. Or they're afraid of what the other person is going to think of silence. Hey. Oh shit, it's getting deep! Uh, if you want some unsolicited advice... Just learn to be comfortable with silence. Mm. Nothing wrong with two people sitting in silence. And now I just sit in silence. And drinking whiskey. Okay. Ah, that's the first time you looked at him. He also did that at Lucas Game on Easter, so he didn't know what it was to look at me. <laughs> if you wanted to give him some treats. No, I think we're good. I think we're... Well, I mean, you know, just oh, he's I'm like, oh, it's okay if she picks me up. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Crazy boy. Oh, this this office is full. The family office. Hey. Robert and I sit in silence and drink, uh, drink whiskey. I take in the rest of the bar. Patrons laughing, playing darts, spilling beer. Mary giving the hard sell to that young man. The young man pretending he's got a phone call from one of his friends. Huh. Maybe silence is nice sometimes. So, <laughs> you ever kill a man? <laughs> I choke on my drink. That is <laughs> quite the thing to jump into. Excuse me? You know, watch the life drains from someone's eye. It's not just their life, you know. It's their hopes and dreams draining away. Every memory and experience they've ever had, gone. I'm laughing because I'm saying this knowing you're behind me. <laughs> uh, no. Oh, amazing. Great. Me neither. Robert knocks back a shot and motions for me to do the same. I reciprocate. I'm just messing with you. Relax. I laugh nervously. Ha ha ha. Or am I? Oh god. I laugh nervously. Again. We sip more whiskey and people watch them more. Mary has her sights set on another man after the other one excused himself to the bathroom and I assumed crawled out the window. 
Gosh, this whiskey's hitting me hard. Gosh, this whiskey's hitting me hard. You betcha. Robert gets up out of the booth, sheltering his jacket. Let's roll. Sorry, whiskey. Inside voices. Let's roll. Wait, what about Mary? Brother, Mary is going to be just fine. I look over at Mary, who's lying on the bar in front of some poor sap. She's singing happy birthday to him while he insists that it's not his birthday. Mary is amazing. We make our way out of the bar and back onto the street. I'm trying my hardest not to stumble, but man, that sidewalk is coming right at me. I hope Robert doesn't notice me tripping over my own feet like this is the first time I've ever been drunk. Where to? You'll see. I follow Robert through the street lamp spotlights until we eventually arrive at a rundown strip mall. There's a beauty salon, a sex shop, a, a computer repair store, a, that looks like it's been closed for 10 years, no. and finally, a liquor store. Hey. Wait here. I'll be right back. After a minute, Robert returns with two wine bottles and brown paper bags. He hands one to me. Cheers. He sits on the curb and drinks. He motions for me to do the same. This is really not how I expected the night to go. I take a sip. White Zinfandel? What? Nothing. I just, I wasn't expecting that. It is delicious, fruity, and refreshing. Do not judge me. I start to say something, thinking of his, I start to say something, think of his lecture about valuing silence earlier and stop. I sip on my wine and watch cars drive by. I could use that advice because I talk way too much. I'm doing that now, but I'm streaming, so fuck it. Huh. Let's throw rocks at shit. What? Robert suddenly hurls a rock at a stop sign. The ding echoes through the empty parking lot. Mm. That felt good. He presses a stone into my free hand. Now you try. Uh, I don't know. With feeling. I look at the rock in my hand and look at the stop sign. Back at the rock, back at the stop sign. I know what has to be done. This one's for you, Pappy. <laughs> I unify. <laughs> I have unresolved resentment towards my father. I'm going to express it through property damage. I hurl the rock at the sign. It sails over the stop sign right into the window of a parked car, leaving a crack. Oh, shit. Dude, run. I leap up and dart into the nearest alley, wine in hand. I can hear Robert's footsteps behind me. After I'm sure I'm far enough away from the crack window that I'm no longer culpable for the heinous, the heinous crime, I stop and catch my breath. Maybe we strike rock throwing from the to-do list. Agreed. Suddenly, my stomach growls. Oh, man, I'm starving. Let's get pizza. I can't argue with that. Or is good around here? Actually, I don't even care if it's good. I just need to be, it just needs to be edible and in my mouth in the next five minutes. Mm -hmm. I know just the place. I follow Robert through a maze of alleys and side streets until we eventually end up in front of a tiny hole in the wall pizza joint. The bright red neon sign reads, Pete's Pizza Pizza. Whole Pete's Pizza Pizza. All right. Ta-da. I can see a few exhausted looking workers behind the counter tossing dough and pulling piping hot pizza right out of the stone oven. My stomach rumbles again. We go up to the counter and get ready to order. Uh, can I get two slices of Hawaiian? Oh wait, Xander, you cool with pineapple on your pizza, right? Of course. We wait a minute for our pizza to come out of the oven. I'm practically drooling at the smell. The cashier hands us each a giant slice on a paper plate so saturated with grease that I'm worried it will fall apart. We take our pizzas outside and wander through the alleyways as we eat. I take a bite. It's absolutely delicious. Pineapple is truly the best pizza mm -hmm. topping. You said it. Man, I feel way better now. Mm -hmm. You and me both. We hear noises coming out of a slightly ajar door in the hallway. Robert looks at me excitedly. Yeah, he's been just pawing at that. He thinks, like, something's in there. Damn. What was that? No, he didn't. I think it was me petting him on the back. <laughs> I'm Catbug! <laughs> Uh, got any more of that wild in ya? Pa no, puppy cat is. Damn, there's nothing in there. You betcha. He's going into space? Yeah. Oh my god, amazing. So, Ariel is currently painting Hamilton right now. Let me, uh. Wait, let me change it up. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It will look better. <laughs> uh. Okay, desktop. All right. Meow meow. Good on ya. Yeah, you being some makulit. Robert and I slide the door open and peek inside. It's completely dark except for some flickering lights. We slowly creep forward, cautious not to be heard or seen. And he missed the initial treat. 
Yeah, you see it now. Go get that tree. Yeah. Come. Go. Uh... Shh. Don't shush me so loud. Shh. We come to the end of the hallway and find ourselves standing in front of a movie screen. Oh, this suddenly makes sense. Did we really just sneak into a movie theater like a couple of teenagers? No talking during the movie. We look into the audience and are surprised to find that it's almost completely empty save for a few rows of teenagers in the front. Uh, they look annoyed when they notice us. Robert starts making his way to the very back of the theater and I follow him. We settle in with our wines and try to make sense of this movie. It's a rom-com, I think. A young man is frantically trying to get through New York to find the woman that he's finally realized he's in love with. Kiss already! There's nobody to kiss yet. You want him to kiss the taxi driver? Hell yeah. The kids down the way notice us heckling. One of them speaks up. Hey man. Oh fuck, what's his voice? Hey man, just like keep it down. Aw oh, damn, that's Ernest Hemingway. Hugo's kid. Ernest! Hey Ernest! I know you, it's me! Your neighbor! Hi! Ernest turns back around, embarrassed. I turn back to Robert. He kiss anyone yet? It turns out that yes, he did kiss someone. He made his way out to a tiny island near New York to profess his love for a woman who for some reason he knew would be there. She tells him that they just hit the jackpot. He said that they had, but I think there's some subtext I'm missing here. Boo! Love is dead! <laughs> Fuck. Shut up! It's beautiful! No, you shut up. Ernest grumbles. The credit starts to roll. I stand up. Robert immediately pulls me back down. Hundreds of people worked very hard to make this film happen. And you're going to sit here and appreciate them. Uh, okay. Look at that. Elizabeth Shelton. She worked really hard. I bet she did lots of good, uh, wardrobe design. Thank you, Elizabeth Shelton, for this beautiful film-going experience. And Peter Anders. Catering. Fit a bunch of people so they could have the energy to do their jobs. What a guy. Hamilton. We let the credits roll while uh, Robert individually thanks every member of the crew. Once it's finally over, he makes sure no animals were harmed in the making of the film. We leave the movie theater. What a guy. We stumble into the theater parking lot, polishing off the rest of our wine. Hey, assholes. Out of nowhere, a rock flies through the air and hits me in the knee. My knee! Oh, my leg! What the hell? Ernest and his friends stand in the alleyway, blocking our exit. Is this really the dramatic, like, bad shit music going on? Some teenager just throw a rock at my leg. Oh, what do you guys want? Why'd you go and throw a rock at my knee? This is my good knee! My orthopedist is gonna be pissed! Ernest tosses another rock up and down in his hands. What's wrong with this kid? You ruined my theater-going experience. Now you have to pay. Oh, well, well, I don't have cash on me right now. I'm like, movies got really expensive. Ernest hucks another rock at my other knee. I'm able to jump out of the way, but I didn't properly stretch before physical activity, and I'm probably going to feel super sore in the morning. Huh. We ruined it for you, huh? That movie was pretty crappy in the first place. Hamilton just wants treats. Let me give him a treat. Fucking YouTube. Sorry. My cat is pestering me for treats. Treat. Treat. Go. Eat it. There you go. Hey, you take that back. That was a beautiful love story with a real gen with real with real genuine acting. Mm. You call that good acting? What classist mainstream slop have you been served your entire life? What? Really? Have you ever even seen any Michael Powell? A matter of life and death, 1946, easily the toughest five minutes of love you'll ever witness. L listen, man. What? No, you listen. That popcorn ass dribble the mass media is shoving down your throat will only make you dumber and sadder. You of all people should try for a, should strive for a higher standard in the art you consume. You consume? Consume. Your name is Ernest Hemingway, for Christ's sake. Mm. Oh, no, now you've done it. Ernest rushes Robert, screaming like a banshee. Ah! Okay, that's enough screaming. <laughs> I dive between Ernest and Robert trying to stop the kid. He lunges forward, kicking me as hard as he can in the knee. Fuck my knee! Hmm? Robert gets in between Ernest and myself. It's as if he's seeing red. Fucking, <laughs> fuck my fucking knee hurts. <laughs> All right, buddy. Talk like punk, get hit like a punk. Robert squares it into a boxer stance. Fuck this part. Queensbury rules. Three minute rounds, one minute rest sessions, uh, rests in between. No low blows, fish hooks, J, J grabs, or high blows. What? what? And don't even think about pulling an illegal turnstile. That's an automatic deduction of three points. I. Yeah, well, fucking I know. I. You will have to designate a second if you're not. <laughs> Holy fuck. 
You'll have to designate a second if you're unable to fill your role as main duelist. One of your friends over there looks like he's had enough uh, youthful vivacity to handle it. Hey man, I don't want to get dragged into this. That movie sucked. Mm. It's too late. You two are bloodbound. If he dies, you die. <laughs> Sorry, I don't make the rules. Talk to Queensbury. We're just... We're, we're gonna go. Ernest and his friends warily back away. Robert calls after them. Mm. The Queensbury Association will hear about mm. this and consume better content. Once the teens are safely out of earshot, Robert turns to me. Are you about to actually fight that kid? Mm. Are you kidding me? I would never hit a child. That would be despicable. I... You throw the rules at them, though. They always bolt. No one wants a Queensbury sanctioned throwdown. Oh. But full disclosure, I made half of that up. Wow. Hey. See, you don't even have to know the rules. You just make them up. Come on, let's get out of here. How dare hey. you. 420. Hey, the 420! Thanks, Allie. Oh, you did remind me. There you go. Oh, wait. Oh, I missed it. Oh, whatever. Black, like the rest of him. <laughs> no, he has a black nose. It's like a little bit gray. Perfect. I got text messages. I'm cold. I know, I'm always sweating. My body runs really hot. I'm basically a personal warmer. Personal space warmer. Whatever it's called. No, that's not. Okay. Dang, so. All right. Uh, Robert and I cool down a bit as we walk back to the neighborhood. I'm so sorry. I get really into the art of filmmaking when I drink. It's okay. This is this is my friend Alex. This is my friend Alex. <laughs> it's okay. I think it's cool how much you like movies. To be honest, I don't know a lot about them myself. Buddy, I got so much to show you. You ever seen any Sam Fuller? I haven't. Mm. Fuller is cash. Uh, thanks for the adventure. <laughs> adventure is all I got, buddy. Robert throws an arm around my shoulder and we drunkenly belt out tunes all the way back. We finally get to his doorstep. <sighs> this was an interesting night. I liked it. A smile forms on his cheeks. Rare sight. Yeah. Let's hang again soon. Yeah? Yeah. I linger there for a second, swaying drunkenly in the night breeze. Robert claps me on the shoulder. Mm. Night, bud. Robert heads back. I'm trying to get with Robert. It's about time. Obvious. Robert heads back inside and I stumble my way back home. <laughs> Date complete. Yeah. What we got? We got an S rank. Lost in your oceanic eyes. Oh, he's lost in my oceanic eyes. We got peak automotive care and silence. Dad tip 87. Spend less money than you make. Uh, while I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. The nice mail person slides a couple letters and a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries for them to get it in. Hey, my coupons. <laughs> Adulting. I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. I lately knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda? She yells through the door. I have something for you. Okay, I just thought you'd want this big old envelope we got from HIA. That's the college. Right. Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. <laughs> Horn Institute for the Arts? I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. Father, please. I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds oh. it. And? The suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. Mm. I can't believe this. Oh, honey, it's okay if you didn't. I got in! Oh, I got in! Oh, are you comparing it to this face? Hold on. We got a painting here. Oh, mouse? Mouse, do your job. Wait, what's up? Yeah, you like it?
Wait, show, show it to the cam. No, oh, it's fine. I like it. It's not done. Yeah. Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god, I really can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview and your photography is incredible. Ah. Wait, Dad. Um. I know this one's really expensive and it's so far away. I think for a moment. HIA was one of the most expensive schools that Amanda applied to, but I knew she had her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but... We're gonna make it work. Mm -hmm. Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me again. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie. We're celebrating tonight. Dinner. Your choice. Wherever you want. <laughs> Wherever? Amanda and I walk along the bayside, tearing into our foiled wrap burritos from a nearby food truck. The bayside? Shit, this is in our town. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad. You know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a Rito with a view. A Rito with a view. Y'all want a bunch of... Wait, got guts bracelets? Did you want got guts bracelets from Allie? Me? Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah, fuck it. Wait, accept stuff or freedom? I don't know. She's just, she's just asking. I have a bunch of mine, too. We can trade. Ooh. Please, Dad, you know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a Rito with a view. A Rito, and then we're just automatically in like freaking Legend of Zelda. Look at him, he's so like. He's, well, you know, he's just, he wants to play. He's like, I want to be that he wants to play. I can't say I'm mad. Men and I sit on a patch of grass and watch si uh, ships sail lazily through the bay. Yeah. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes, and there are all these galleries nearby, and there's a discount if you bring your student ID. And Amanda, slow down. You're gonna choke on your burrito. I know. I'm just excited. Did I mention that students get their own studio space once they're seniors, and we get all the professional photo editing software for free? It's a nice, uh, it's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HIA, but I wish she wouldn't do it in between uh, bites of her burrito. I thought I taught her to chew with her mouth closed. I wonder who my roommate's gonna be. You take an online survey, and they match you with someone with similar majors and interests. I bet we're gonna be best friends. Why didn't fucking FDU do that? Well, we didn't do that. They're just like, yeah, yeah, fucking, you either find someone or we put you with someone. Fuck. Craig and I were. Craig and I were. A good roommate can be a lifelong friend. Look how. At FDU, they did do that? Wait, they did do that? No, they didn't. What? An online survey to match you with similar students? Okay, yeah, they do the random ones about different questions, but like, they don't fucking know. Like, they're working on other shit. Like, that's the fucking worst of it. And then they're just like, oh. Well, Rude. Ariel worked in the housing. Oh, you did work in the housing office. I remember visiting you. Mm -hmm. Uh, but don't even get me started on bad roommates. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I'm just kidding. We didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. Carl ruled. Yay. Oh, they let you have animals in the dorms if you say a note. Uh, if you get a note saying that you need one, but I could forge one. I think I get a rabbit. Or maybe a snake. Maybe both. Would this snake eat a rabbit, though? Oh, boy. I think I'll leave all that up to you. She's so excited. I don't want to disappoint her. But I need to be real for a second. Oh, we're getting real for a second. So... You know I had the talk with Mr. Vega, who's basically me. He likes pro wrestling. Mm. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? The what? No. Wait. Mm. What? I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but I need you to knock it off, uh, knock it out of the park with these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, I, we need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. Ah. Okay. I promise I'll try harder. I pat her on the back. Think you can hurdle, uh, good God. Think you can handle a 14 hour drive to come home for the holidays? There's gonna be some treacherous ice roads to cross and don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. Well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. <laughs> My eyes immediately well up with tears. Oh, dad, don't cry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just very proud of you. You're all grown up now and you're such a good person. 
And I hope you know how important you are to me. Dad's tough. You're gonna make me cry too. Also, what the fuck is with that weird voice? It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears in my burrito. It's gonna make it taste sad. Valid. Don't cry on your food. It'll make it taste sad. I pull on Amanda for a hug and a kiss on her forehead. Love you, kiddo. Love you too, pops. Aww. This game is the best game! Welcome. It's called Dream Daddy, a daddy dating simulator. Yeah, you right? Yeah, it's made by the Game Grumps, so it's really funny. Yeah, <laughs> from all the times I just was like, Pops in this game! Yeah, you have a hat from them. Yeah. All right, let's just we're just doing a we're doing a Robert only run right now. Second day with Robert. Let's go. Dad tip number 75. Call someone if you're thinking about them. They probably want to hear from you too. I had a lot of fun with Robert the last time we hung out, but I'm beginning to wonder if he's dodging me. I've tried messaging him a few times and Dad book says he hasn't even read them. I haven't even seen him come out of his house actually. I decided to spend uh, to send him one last message, figuring this will produce the same result. Hey man, don't know where you've been, but we should grab a drink soon. I walk away from the computer because at this point, I know he's not messaging me back anytime soon. I linger in the kitchen. I'm all caught up on the work. The house is relatively clean. I'm all caught up on work. The house is... Wait, what job does he have? Because he, like, he doesn't have a job. He never goes to work. Wait, whomst? I just texted you, Taylor. What's good? <laughs> um, maybe I should do something nice for Amanda. Oh, I'll bake her her favorite pie. I root through the pantry and pull out all the ingredients. This is an old family recipe that I used to make with my grandmother when we were, when I was a kid. I lost the actual recipe card a long time ago, but I think I'll be able to remember how to make it. What's goody? Uh, I start mixing the ingredients together for the crust until I get a nice dough. I throw some cherries in a saucepan to make the filling. Normally, I don't like to multitask in the kitchen, but this cherry pie is a piece of cake. Pie? It's a piece of pie. I'm making a pie. Uh, man, I can never remember what temperature that you're supposed to set the oven at. I'm pretty sure it's 375, but I could be wrong. Who am I kidding? I'm never wrong when it comes to this pie. My special twist on my grandma's recipe includes a secret ingredient that not even Amanda knows about. It really makes the cherries extra flavorful. God, well, I can't remember what the secret ingredient is. Oh. Uh, the fucking, uh... Almond extract! Oh, is that gonna kill my daughter? Hold on. Is she allergic to almonds and I'm forgetting? Hold up. We're saving. Almond extract. Oh, it's almond extract. Duh. Oops, I accidentally poured a little too much in. Way too much in. I'm sure it's fine. Baking is an art and some of the most beautiful arts made from mistakes. It's cold as, as fuck in my room. Apparently it's hot in this room, but I'm wearing shorts so my legs are cold. This, le this leg, this wall is drafty. I finally get the pie in the oven. How long am I supposed to leave it in there for? 50 minutes? I'll just wing it. This this pie is going to blow the fuck up. Amanda's going to be so excited. The kid loves pie. I have a seat in the kitchen table and do word jumbles until Amanda comes at home. I can hear the door slam open. Yo, Pops, what smells like pie in here? It's pie, sweetie. Amanda darts over to the oven and looks inside. Yes! Hey, it's not done. Be patient. Huh? What's your angle here? What? Hmm? Pies are an object-based confection. Uh, pies are an objective-based confection. What are you trying to get out of me? I've been leading a double life. Amanda, I have terrible news for you. I'm actually a pro skateboarder and inspiring astronaut and bank robber. The lifestyle is calling me back and I must go. One last job, you know how it is. This pie was the only way I knew how to tell you. Well, I appreciate the years we spent together, but a trade-up is a trade-up. Remember me when you're kicking your feet up in Ibiza. Thanks for all the pie. We share a cordial handshake. I wait a few more minutes before taking the pie out of the oven. I set it on the rack to cool and guard it so Amanda doesn't dig in before it's ready. Huh. What? Does it look kind of weird to you? Oh, that's just... Me taking artistic license on what cherry pie means to me emotionally. I'm just saying this because, you know, it seems like you might have baked this pie incorrectly. And you're currently, right now, trying to pass it off as a good thing. It's art, sweetie. Was it art when you accidentally baked a whole uncracked egg into the center of my 12th birthday cake? Oh, fuck. Well, it's... 
Was it art when you tried to make brownies and accidentally created chlorine gas? Hold on. <laughs> Actual chemist over here. Well, that's a bit of an exaggeration. Was it art? <laughs> Was it art when you just eat the pie, Panda? I cut us a few slices and we sit down to eat. The cherry filling oozes out of the sides and the buttery crust. The buttery flaky crust. The buttery cracky cr crispy crust. <laughs> the buttery crust glistens. I watch Amanda take a bite. Oh, no. Ugh. What's wrong? Is it not no. good? Amanda winces and fans her mouth. No, I. I just burned the heck out of the roof of my mouth. The pie is amazing. Sorry for doubting you. I breathe a sigh of relief and take a bite. She's right. The pie is pretty incredible, as it always is. I'm really proud of you for making a pie without burning the new house down. Your room is drafty as hell. That's a big oof. I got a few dad tricks up my dad's sleeve. Maybe fathers aren't as bumbling and stupid as the media makes us out to be. Maybe we, as a society, should have a little more respect for fathers as a whole. Now nah, we dumb as fuck. We? I'm not a dad. I swear to God, I'm not a dad. Because that's what I made it. Okay. <laughs> you you get to make your own dad, and I made it that. Dad, your sleeve is on fire. I run to the sink and put myself out. Pride will be my undoing. Amanda and I clean up the kitchen and play a little more living room hoops before she retreats to her room and does homework. I go back to my word jumbles. Hey, this one spells cat. The rest of the evening trickles by. We eat dinner. I help Amanda with one of her scholarship applications, and we both start getting ready for bed. What's good? My day's interesting. Yeah, that's whatever. I decide to check dad book one last time before I climb into bed. Still nothing from Robert. Hope he's okay. I turn out the lights and lie down. Hey. Xander. Hey. Hey, Xander. Hey, I'm outside. Uh, what is that? I was just on the verge of falling asleep. I climb out of bed and try to identify the source of the digging. My computer screen illuminates the dark room. I walk over to it, ready to turn it off when I notice what's happening on screen. Don't make me honk. I will honk. Get out here. I look out my window, and sure enough, there's Robert leaning up against his pickup truck in my driveway. I open my door and try to figure out what's going on. Hey. Hey? Wanna hang? I was kind of sleeping. Hmm. That's no fun. Uh. Come on, hang. Come and hang out. I would argue that sleeping is very fun, but I don't have anywhere to be in the morning. Might as well live a little. Sure. Oh. Cool. You plan on going out like that? I look down and realize that I am, in fact, not wearing pants. Uh. I mean, I don't mind. Right. One second. <laughs> I run inside, throw on my going out pants, shoes, and jacket. I grab my keys and meet Robert back outside. Mm. Ready? Ready. Mm -hmm. Hop in. I jump into the passenger seat of his old red pickup truck. I have to move a few empty cigarette packets and a gas station receipt out of the way before I can sit. Robert silently starts the car and we drive out of the cul-de-sac. Hey. You like Tom Waits? Hoist that rag, baby. I look. Before I can answer, Robert turns off the radio. Yep, that's Tom Waits, all right? He lights a cigarette and cracks the window. We drive together in silence. So, where are we going? Robert doesn't respond. Robert? Oh. Oh, I heard you. He still doesn't. Oh, we got the ominous scary music. Yes, take him for a ride. Calm down, Taylor. He still doesn't answer my question. I look out the window and notice that Robert's taking us to the highway. I twiddle my thumbs. Well, whatever I've gotten myself into, it looks like I'm in I'm in it for the night. I settle into my seat and watch streetlights pass by. I glance over to Robert, who's driving intently. He looks tired, as he always does. But there's something a bit more there that I just can't place. Say nothing. I remember what Robert said about hating small talk and decide to keep my mouth shut. He knows me staring. Stop looking so nervous. I'm not nervous. I'm a little nervous. Oh. Just hang on. We're almost there. I almost, uh, almost where? I have no idea where we are. I think we're m moving at a slight incline, but I'm not so sure. We eventually come up to a stop. Rob gets out of the car, and I sit for a second, unsure if he wants me to get out, too. What are you waiting for? I hastily exit the car. Robert sits on the bed of his truck and pats the space next to him. I sit down and take in the view. We're on a hill overlooking the city skyline against the bay. The cool night air rustles some trees near us as lights blink in the distance. Off to the side, I can see, see an entrance to a dense forest. Man, it's all, all so gorgeous. Yeah. Robert? <laughs> this is where I come to masturbate. <laughs> what? You did not. Oh my God. Oh. I'm kidding. What's wrong with you? <laughs> this is my little spot where I come to think. He does dominate. Radiate, he does dominate. That's a 40 and slip. He does radiate dom energy. But you know what? Maybe he has like this dom exterior and inside he's a, he's a sub, you know? 
Go off. <laughs> All right. Okay. My roommate is roasting her boyfriend. It's nice. You can see the whole city from up here. It really gives you some perspective. Robert reaches behind him and pulls something out from under his jacket. It glints in the moonlight, and I suddenly realize what it is. Oh, shit. That's a knife. Oh, please don't stab me. Robert reaches into his pocket and pulls out a small, pe a small piece of wood. Please don't stab me with that either. Yeah. Robert takes the knife to the piece of wood and starts carving at it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I breathe a very audible sigh of relief as Robert looks at me sideways. Did you think I was going to stab you just now? What? No. Mm -hmm. Hate to break it to you, but I I did, in fact, <laughs> hate to break it to you, but I did, in fact, bring you out here to harvest your organs. Play along. Yeah, well, you think you caught me in your trap, but I knew. For years, I've been putting the most vile junk food in my body in preparation for this day. Come at me, friend, and reap what you will. Oh. Two steps ahead of you at all times. That's how I operate. Mm. Ha ha. Ha! Nothing gets past you, huh? Hey. Robert reaches into his pocket and pulls out a folding knife that he opens and hands to me. Mm. I'm going to warn you. The last guy I handed... I had the... Fuck, I can't read for some reason. I'm going to warn you. The last guy I had a knife fight with lost three fingers because he didn't know the eight basic rules of knife fighting. You're familiar, correct? I, I honestly can't tell when you're kidding. Mm. I'm so many level, I'm so many levels of irony deep that I've forgotten what humor is. He and I laugh. Huh. Have you ever whittled before? Considering that I'm not a grandpa, no. Mm. Hugo is absolutely a dom. I'm fucking, well, he likes pro wrestling, so. What do you mean by that? Well, I just thought that you would have a block of wood shipped to you along with your first social security check. Mm. Xander, I'll have you know that whittling is a time-honored tradition enjoyed by both young and old alike. That you're dismissing it before you even tried it speaks volumes about your character. Huh. However, because I've gotten to know you for some time and have come to think of us as friends, I'm willing to attribute it to ignorance instead of malice. Huh. What I'm trying to say is, go get that stick. Robert motions to a good-looking stick on the ground, perfect for potential whittling. I pick it up. Yeah, you never seen a good-looking stick before? She just be handsome. Man, it's a sexy fucking stick. <laughs> the most important thing to remember while whittling is to cut with the grain, not against it. If you cut against the grain, the wood's gonna splinter. Isn't the most important thing safety? Oh. Huh. No. Getting hurt comes with the territory. Look at my damn hands. Look at my hands! <laughs> Allie was also like, good-looking stick. I look at his damn hands. They're calloused and covered in white, little white scars. They're very nice hands. You can't make a stick omelet without breaking a few hand eggs. What the fuck? <laughs> All right, let's whittle. Knife that knife wood. that wood. All right, there's a knife. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good start. What is that? Uh, knitting needle. Yeah. But only one. You you made a useless knitting needle. Just one. <laughs> Damn hands. Let me some good looking sticks. Tell me about this one. Uh, flatworm. Gross. <laughs> you made a flat worm. <laughs> it's a tongue depressor. Uh, Allie, you're not attracted by nice hands. You're attracted too. Oh, it's a toothpick. What's the story here? Toothpick. You realize that you could have just picked your teeth with a knife? <laughs> God damn it, Robert. Hello? Can I have an egg? Excuse me? Sir? Hello? Sir? An egg? Hello? Oh, no, sorry. It's a Ouija board planchette. Okay, here we go. Now all you need to do is carve up a board and we're set. And also maybe carve a ghost. You made a Ouija board planchette. Yeah, carve a ghost. That's the name of my next album. Damien has sub energy. Yeah, he also screamed in the movie theater because he didn't tell you he was scared of horror movies. Like, ah! Literally what he did. Nice form. What's that supposed to be? A self-portrait. Spitting image of you. You made a masterpiece. <laughs> you right. Oh my god, how many am I going to make? Interesting. What do we have here? <laughs> chopstick. Righty. Chopstick. Lefty. Chopstick. Ambidextrous. He's baby. It's a stick. 
You made a chopstick. Ambidextrous. Are we done? Oh my god, it's a huge piece of wood. Yeah. Yeah. Buy chopstick. That's not what that means for sure. Oh my god, please. Yeah. If you keep this up, you'll be whittling you'll be a whittling pro in no time. New friend. He's beautiful. I'm happy for you. You made a new friend. <laughs> Is this where I chop my finger off trying to close? Oh, no, we still got more. What is this? What the hell is this? Oh my god, I made a pony! Beautiful handiwork. What do you call it? Sir Horsington the Brave. A brave and noble name for a brave and noble creature. You made a beautiful gift for Amanda. Ah, That's my daughter. Okay, this is where I slice my hand. Robert and I sit in silence for a while, carving our pieces of wood. I think I'm getting the hang of this. It's actually kind of relaxing. I glance over to see what Robert's working on. He's carving a smaller wooden knife? Ah! While I'm distracted, the knife slices into my thumb. Blood gushes all over my little wooden carving. Um, Robert is lost in carving and doesn't notice me bleeding everywhere. Uh, Robert still doesn't notice. Robert, I'm dying. I'm bleeding to death. Robert finally looks over. He reaches into his jacket again. Jesus, how much stuff does this guy keep in there? And pulls out a red bandana. He wraps it around my thumb. Hold tight. He hops off the car, and I can hear him rummaging around in his... Uh, he hops off the truck, and I can hear him rummaging around in his car. He comes back a moment later with a well-stocked first aid kit. Robert carefully wipes all the blood off my hand and wipes a bit of antiseptic onto the cut. With surprising gentleness, uh, he places a bit of gauze on the wound and wraps it all up. Huh. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. He hands me what's left of the tube of antiseptic. Mm -hmm. Make sure to keep that cut clean. It's oddly touching end. A little sexy? <laughs> I guess I'm a real whittler now. Oh. That you are. Be careful, though. They're attracted to the smell of blood. Wait, what? What's attracted to the smell of blood? <sighs> Cryptids. Tons of them out here, <laughs> you know? Cryptids. Cryptids? Like Mothman and stuff? Uh -huh. Mothman is bullshit. But yeah, the town's a hotbed for cryptozool <laughs> cryptozoological occurrences. You're joking. Uh -huh. Oh. How I wish I were. I'm a skeptic myself, or at least I thought I was. There are things in this woods that can't possibly comprehend. That we can't possibly comprehend. I think about my entire time in this city. Aside from the occasional stray coyote, I don't think it's too bad. Uh -huh. You ever hear of the Dover Ghost? I don't think so. Well, let me tell you a story. Oh. I was out in the woods here on a weekend camping trip with Betsy. You don't know Betsy, but she's a big pup. Pitbull. Real intimidating. I feel safe around her. First night goes without incident. I get some solitude. Betsy gets to pee wherever she wants. All good stuff. <sighs> Second day. I get the idea into my head that I can hide deeper into the woods. Probably against my better judgment, but hey. We're just having a fun camping trip, right? So me and Betsy start marching in the morning. Mm -hmm. It gets a little late. We set up camp. But it's different this night. Real quiet. I can't hear the birds, the crickets, squirrels. Nothing dead silent. Hmm. Then it happens. I hear the most unholy growl I've ever heard in my life, right outside my tent. Me and Betsy, we go to investigate. We look around the clearing. Nobody's there. Hmm. But then there's this feeling. Not sure if I can quite describe it. I know someone, something is watching us. Betsy, though, she's scared. Never seen her like that. And when she's scared, I know I should be too. And then I see it in the distance. Hmm. A man. But... If something didn't know what a man was supposed to look like made it, it just looked wrong. Big. Arms too long for its body. Black eyes. It just stood there and stared at me. Uh -huh. Then it disappeared. What's up? It's Slender Man. <laughs> I hear one yelp from Betsy and I turn around to check on her, but she's gone. Into thin air. Don't touch the painting. Don't touch the painting. I didn't sleep at all in my tent that night. I don't think I slept right since. You're lying. Okay, you're full of shit. You think I'm lying? Robert pulls out his wallet and shows me a picture of a beautiful pit bull. Tell that to Betsy. They say that if you listen closely on quiet nights, nights just like tonight, you can hear the howl of the Dover ghost. A howl resonates through the woods. It doesn't sound like a regular howl. It's so guttural. Even from far away, something about it makes my skin crawl. Uh -huh. Okay, Robert, real funny. I turn to look at Robert. He's white as a sheet. You're messing with me, right? Really? 
and I was messing with you up until literally just now. I totally made up that camping story. I strained my eyes to scan the forest line, trying to see where the howling originated from. Off in the distance, I see something. It's so far away, I can barely make out a shape. It looks human, but it's... Dragging something? Um, do you see that? Mm -hmm. We should go. Huh? Robert and I slowly back away and get into the truck. He turns off his headlights and make a slow crawl away back onto the road. I'm too scared to look back. What? What was that? Whoa, whoa. The Dover ghost, I guessed. I chuckle nervously. This time he doesn't look like he's messing with me. Or maybe something... Or maybe someone legally dumping garbage on a wildlife preserve? Mm. Yeah, that's the story we'll tell ourselves. Really? We sit in silence a while longer. The fear of whatever was slowly... Subs uh, the fear of whatever that was slowly subsiding as we got closer to the city. Oh, thanks for coming out. This is fun. I'm sorry I haven't been in touch. I've just... I've been in a way lately. I've had to get out of the house. Oh. Had to be around somebody. You doing okay, man? Mm -hmm. Robert thinks for a second and lights another cigarette. Uh. Oh. Been doing a lot of thinking. He takes a long drag. Mm -hmm. As I get older, I feel more and more that I'm just drowning in the sea of regret. I was so busy chasing after these things that I thought would make me happy that I didn't think about anyone else. All I cared about was myself. I didn't even think. Hey. Robert stops. I wait for him to finish his thought, but he just stares at the road. Maybe I'm just built like this. Mm. Uh, this voice hurts my throat. Oh, uh, fuck. Or maybe I do it to myself. Maybe it's my own choice that I'm, un that I'm as unhappy as I am. I try to think of something to say. I remember all the times in my life when I've been sad, and there's a great many of them. But there was always a light at the end of the tunnel. Something I held on that kept me going. But there's something so resigned about the way Robert's talking. Let me close the door. Also, Allie, who's Charlie? Glad you told me. It must have taken a lot of you to want to tell somebody this. Mm -hmm. You're a mysterious guy, Robert. You don't have to be. Your wooden horse unicorn. Is that from the videos? No, uh... Do you ever uh -oh. wish you were a better father? I think about it for a second. <laughs> All the time. You can read the parroting books you want. You can read all the Charlie. Oh you know, yeah, Charlie. Is that the one that's like Charlie that kills people? Um, wait, serious time. All the time. You can read all the parenting books you want, but nothing will ever prepare you for raising a child. There's so much stuff I regret or wish that I could have done better, but I don't have the answers. I don't know if anyone does. Hey, it's funny. I look at you and your relationship with your relationship with your daughter and it seems perfect it isn't uh, at least you're there for her i stare out the window at the blur of passing trees i just hope i'm a better father to my kid than my dad was to me mm -hmm. what'd your dad do it's more about what he didn't do he was quiet stoic don't think he ever told me once that he loved me he cared more about his work than he ever did about me or my mom oh carl yeah that's carl I got those two mixed up. That's why I was like thinking. Do you hate him? No. I used to. But after it became apparent, I I just kind of feel bad for him. He missed out on my whole childhood. When I think about all the happiest moments in my life, they're all with Amanda and Alex. And he just, he wasn't there. He scheduled a second interview nice. It hurt like hell when I had to leave him die. <laughs> it hurt like hell when I had to leave him to die in that Belarusian prison. Huh? What? I turn and smile at him. No, he's retired in Florida with my mom. We go there every Christmas. We both break out into laughter. He pats me on the shoulder. We drive the rest of the way in silence, listening to the radio and watching the bright lights of the city grow bigger. Robert drops me off at my place. As I'm about to close the passenger door, I realize that I still have Robert's pocket knife in my jacket. I pull it out and offer it back to him. Oh. You hold on to that. 
never know when you might need it. Night, Robert. Have a safe drive home. It's literally like three houses down. Uh, he then immediately pulls into his driveway, which is one over from my... Yeah! Fucking... He gets out and waves. I tiptoe into the house. Careful not to wake Amanda up. Whoa! Where'd you come from? Mm -hmm. I look around and spot Amanda coming out of the kitchen with a glass of water. Mm -hmm. I thought you were sleeping. Oh, uh, Robert woke me up to do cryptid hunting. <laughs> you know the Mothman is bullshit, right? Amanda? Lang... Y you know what? It's fine. Eh? I think about the conversation I had with Robert in the car as Amanda starts walking towards her room. Hey, Amanda. Hmm. She stops. I love you. That was weird. <laughs> I love you. Hmm. It's weird when you say it outright and sincere like that, but I love you too. <laughs> Night. I chuckle to myself, then finally decide to go to bed. Second date's done! Let's go. Baby boomer, handy, baby boomer, crime, paranoia, blood, truck. <laughs> we got that S rank. We can kill it. Okay, but that episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved was literally just like a tourist video for that town. Okay, Ryan would beg to differ, Shane would not. Well, it's been a long day. I'm just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and walk down to the hall, in my, uh, down the hall to my room. I wonder if Amanda's still awake. The kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I can hear a faint sound, but I can't quite make out what it is. I get a little closer. Oh, it's this part. Is she crying? I knock on the door. Uh, I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda. The crying immediately stops. Uh, am I gonna try and voice act her crying? <laughs> Not right now. Her voice sounds so strained. She sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. Open the door. <laughs> in the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed, knees hugged against her body. Is everything okay? I, I don't want to talk about it. Leave her alone. All right, I'll leave you be. I back out of the room and close the door gently behind me. She immediately starts crying again. Anyway, fucking... If your teenage daughter is crying about some shit she don't want to talk to you about, you leave her the fuck alone. Um, wow, I have no idea what has her so upset. She seemed totally normal. I feel awful just leaving her to cry. But I also get the feeling that if I tried to do anything else, it would have only made her more upset. Oh my god, look at this pup. Hello? Is there... A friend sent me a snap of a dog. I can't stop mentally cycling through all sorts of awful things she could be dealing with right now. More than anything, I just want her to be happy and safe. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. After a long night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever's bothering mm -hmm. her. About ten minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle into the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything big going on at school today? <gasps> no. Okay. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster level up and takes her still freezer burned waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up the bag and storms out. Oh my god, that was loud and that scared me. Uh, okay. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short-lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at a picture of Amanda, and I uh, and I blah, blah, take a look at a picture of Amanda, and I hanging on the wall, and I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knee, she would get up and try again. Finally, I had to stop because her uh, she was bleeding everywhere. Then she started crying because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. Guys, I'm making steak tonight and watching Star Wars with my roommate because she's never seen the Star Wars movies fully. Like, she knows, has an idea of what it's about. Uh, but I was like, I bet. So we're going to watch all these movies together, right? And also, I'm cooking steak. Someone wife me up. I'm a great roommate. Um, as I put the bike away, she just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her for ice cream, and it was like nothing even happened. 
after giving it a bit of thought, I decided that I would force her to talk about it. Uh, I decided that if I'm going to for... I can read. Oh my god, a fucking... We're begging her something uh, so she can talk about her problems. Okay. I want steak in Star Wars. Allie, come over. I start rummaging around for ingredients. <laughs> I said that as a question. I start rummaging around for ingredients? I hear Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline for her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. I once did. Yeah, I made you watch freaking Empire Strikes Back at my house, Taylor. Remember? Uh, hey, pumpkin. What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Yeah. I wanted to say sorry about last night. Oh yeah, dude. I make chicken. I make. Like, blah, blah, blah. I made chicken parm for my roommate, and she was just like, "You changed my life." Holy fuck! So, two chefs' kisses. I still got it. I want to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know something's wrong, and I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So just... Whatever it is, and you don't have to tell me about it if you don't want to, but... Whatever it is, just know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Uh. Honey, you know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language we both understand. I pull out a cake from the refrigerator and place it on the table. Hopefully, the frosting has set by now. Ta-da! Dad. It took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting somewhere around sad and had to start over again. Sorry you're sad, but I support you 100%. I want that chicken parm so bad right now. Yeah, and I want a big bopper right now, so like, bruh. Hey, this is beautiful. It's strawberry. Amanda gives me a big old hug. I grab some plates and forks and serve us up some delicious cake. So, it's really stupid. What is? This whole thing, I know I've been really weird lately, and there's just... I just... I don't... I don't know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? Oh. I guess I should start from the top. So you know how Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California, right? Emma R... The best friend. Yes. You got it. Wow, proud of you. Anyway, ever since she got ex the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? And she's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P. I just thought it was all in my head for a while, but then I found out that Rosie M. Uh, I found out that I found out from Rosie M. that both of the Emmas, Grace and Noah, all went to a party at Mackenzie F's on the same night they all told me they were busy studying for the Calc AB final. Yikes. <sighs> so, another important piece of information is... Uh, God, this is embarrassing. I um, I have a crush on Noah, and uh, that's a thing. What? Whoa, I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Okay. You're a bad liar. So are you. I learned from the worst. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so the only person I told about the crush was Emma R, and she promised not to tell anybody, and I didn't confront them about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama, so I just kept quiet and kept going about my business. Amanda sighs. And then one day I invite everybody out to get nachos at the mall, and after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they're all like, oh, they're busy, simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we were out of chips, and I really, really wanted nachos. Totally understandable. <gasps> So I go to the mall anyway, I get to the food court, and who do I see there but Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah all hanging out together eating nachos without me. What? It gets better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them, and I realize that Noah has his arm around Emma R, which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss. No. Yes, I know. So I start over there, and I'm like, hey. And Grace drops a nacho on her shirt, because of course she does, and Emma R just like glares at me. Grace, Grace, nothing's coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the... Uh, gossipy one? I know! Yeah. Grace is the one nobody really likes. Or I guess that's me now. But anyway, nobody will say anything. And I'm just like, you guys suck. Which I realize is not the most eloquent thing to say. But I was very angry and really embarrassed. And I just wanted to get out of there. So I left without nachos, might I add. Which only further contributed to this shitty day. And I immediately dropped a long, a super long text to the group chat. Asking why they've been so weird. And I wrote another one to Emma R. Asking how long the Noah thing's been going on. And uh, I'm sorry, I know that's a lot. You still following... Uh, what did Emma R say? Oh, okay. Go look at this. Emma R says, you know what? Let me just read it to you. Amanda pulls out her phone and reads word for word an arduously long string of text messages. Mm -hmm. You'll bring me one. Nice. Can you believe that? 
I cannot believe that. I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, do I not understand what she's talking about. This is all beyond me, but I am trying my hardest to be supportive. They were dating in secret for like months so i told her that she's being a really terrible friend and she's like well if you think i'm so terrible then just stop being my friend and i was like okay and then she left me on red and then wait left me on red what's that oh like she saw my message and didn't reply i know because there are red receipts i don't know what red receipts are but i'm just going to nod and pretend i understand gotcha so while this is happening i'm talking to emma p about how mad i am because she's at least being kind of reasonable and i'm kind of and i'm venting about her I'm venting to her about how pissed I am at everybody and stuff. And then out of nowhere, Noah texts me and is like, how could you say that about me? And I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me about, tells me that Emma P sent screenshots of everything I told her to the group chat that I got kicked out of. All right, I think you lost me a screenshots, but that definitely sounds bad. There's so much more, but honestly, it's all just really stupid teenager stuff. The bottom line is that everybody dropped me. Half my grade hates me. And now I have no friends. Amanda, I'm so sorry. I almost expected it from everybody else, but uh. Emma R has been there since Dad died. I can't believe she just stabbed me in the back like that. I'm not even that mad she's dating Noah. I'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs at the remnant of her cake. Okay. I take it back. I'm kind of mad she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everyone just decide I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. And as mad as I am at everyone, like, I miss him, Dad. Amanda looks so dejected, I almost can't take it. What could I possibly say to help? Uh. Anyways, that's it. That's the whole sordid tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot goss. Wow. I know, it's pretty dumb. It's not dumb. No, it's a stupid thing to be upset over. Amanda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. I guess. Unless you've secretly been a robot who's approximating human feelings this whole time. Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long, long time ago. But seriously, I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. Um, I am monster truck. You are monster truck. <laughs> monster truck. Honey, high school sucks. You make friends with people just because they're there. When you're living in your hometown, there's a pretty small pool of people to choose from. Second? Second what? Uh, but once you go to college, once you get into the real world, you're going to be exposed to all sorts of people. Oh, second option. I got it. Uh, to all sorts of people. And it's going to be easier uh, to make friends with people who really get to you. Well, there's a lag, Ally. <laughs> so when you said that, I already chose. Some of those friendships can last a lifetime. I mean, look at me and Craig. And some of them only last a little while, and that's okay, too. You're going to make so many awesome new friends at art school. Ultimately, I think this says way more about their character than it does about yours. Because you're amazing. And if they can't see that, well, that's their problem. Huh. I'll keep that in mind. I look down at the table. Jeremy says I am monster truck. Did we just eat a whole cake? Yeah. Yes. Yes, we did just eat a whole cake. Well, good talk. Amanda gets up to go to her room. Before she closes the door, she turns around. Hey, Pops? Yeah? Thank you. You are always welcome. I love you, Amanda. I love you too, Dad. That voice act of mine always gets me. It's just like... My daughter loves me. <laughs> me. Not a dad at all. Welcome voice acted line mm, makes me sad Xander listen this is you from the past whoa how'd this happen I figured you're trying to reply to this because I know myself but this is an automated message from you earlier this morning when it was socially unacceptable to go out and buy ice cream I forgot I did that I forgot how I did that as well the future is amazing listen life is short and ice cream should always be acceptable but unfortunately this isn't the society we live in and it's less a society we live in, and more me projecting my own anxiety about being judged by uh, uh, a little, about being judged onto others. But you know what I mean. By the time you read this, it is a certain time of day in which nobody will bat an eye at you for going out and buying ice cream. You know what to do. Be good, me. Buy that ice cream. We're getting the scream. You know what? I've earned a treat. On the way home, I decided to stop off and grab some ice cream, which I fully plan to eat directly from the tub. I spend a lot of time trying to figure out 
just which type of ice cream I'd like to eat directly from the tub. Uh, top, top, tub. Rocky Road, pistachio. Oh, Amanda's probably gonna want some too. Better get two tubs. She loves cookie dough ice cream, right? Hey, Mister. I turn around to see Ernest leaning up against the wall of the convenience store. Yeah, you fucking chucked rocks on my good knee, you dick. Oh, Hamilton's crying. Guys, I'm going to be right back. I have to feed Hamilton, Hamilton, Hamilton some dinner. But before that, come here, Bubba. Here's the boy. Long boy. It's Meowth from Sword and Shield. All right, let's go feed you, Bubba. Let's get this ice cream. Let's also get bamboozled because Ernest wants us to buy him vape juice. Ernest? Oh shit, I fucked up. Hold on. Here we go. You're cool, right? No way. I'm about to go sprawl out on the couch between a liter of ice cream and a basic cable package, and I have every intention of waking up in that position tomorrow morning. What do you think? Man, talking to you sucks. Could you just help me out? Help you out? There's no fire involved, is there? Just clouds. So if I give you $20, will you buy me e-liquid? Ernest, what's e-liquid? It's like, uh, Gatorade. You know, electrolyte liquid. I did it myself, but I'm banned from here for trying to run a grift on the cashier. A classic fiddle game. You know the deal. Oh, if you're talking about balanced electrolytes, then I got you, little buddy. I didn't know you played the fiddle. Just ask the clerk. <laughs> Xander's a dumbass. Just ask the clerk for blue cran razap. Cran razapple. Cran razapple vortex. He'll know what it is. I pick up a tub of pistachio ice cream. Nice. And a tub of cookie dough for Amanda. Now I want pistachio ice cream. I search around for blue crazen void starter, but can't seem to find any. I turn to the cashier. Say, where's your finest e liquid? Behind the counter. You got ID? First of all, my daughter is older than you. Second of all, I'm flattered. I switched shampoo recently. Is that what's taking some years off? Look, you need to be 21 to buy vape juice. Your hair doesn't look a day over 20. Wait a minute. Are you just trying to butter me up to get me to buy some more ice cream? Because it's working. I glance outside, spot Ernest staring at me. Double wait a minute. Wait, so you're telling me that e-liquid is not a sports drink? It's for vaping. Why did he get Robert's voice? Ernest is watching intently through the window. I better give. I better go give that kid a piece of my mind. I see. 
Okay, look, I'm gonna pretend you didn't just try to trick me into buying you that old Baphomet's cough syrup and then go inside here to purchase my ice cream. I won't tell your dad if you promise to scram. <laughs> Baphomet's cough syrup. And stop vaping. You'll get popcorn long. What if I give you $25? Go home, Ernest. As I'm walking back inside, Ernest calls after me. You can get popcorn long from microwave popcorn, you know? I no longer trust this child, but the mere notion strikes fear into my heart. Who's his dad? Uh... Amanda's history teacher. Sorry, I was trying to remember my daughter's name even after uh, she said, I love you, dad, and it made me get emotional. I go back inside to complete my purchase with a good cashier. Thank you, kind sir, for your time and generous hair compliments. You got it, bub. Oh my god, the cashier's Wolverine. I glance out the window. To, uh, I glance out the window while... That makes no sense to me. I glance out the window to see Ernest still outside. Looks like he's talking to some other poor sap. Guess I should go outside and save this other guy some grief. Wait a second. That's definitely a cop. Oh boy. I grab my tub of ice cream and bolt outside. Ernest is already face down on the hood of a squad car. Ernest, did you seriously just try to get a cop to buy you e-liquid? Do you know this kid? Oh, fuck. Uh... Name it. I'm friends with the dad. Uh, yeah, we live in the same cul-de-sac. I know his dad. Listen, he's a good kid, and I'm this boy's father. I turn around and see Robert walking off the street towards the convenience store. Oh. Ernest, what are you doing? I want a lawyer. First of all, good first instinct. Remember that you're not required to answer any questions from a police officer without a lawyer present. You're this boy's father? Hey. Yes, sir. Ernest likes to lash out at me like this ever since the accident. Oh, um, I don't like talking about it. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Robert gets a wistful twinkle in his eye. Hi. It all started seven summers ago. My hair was long then. New metal was still in style. <laughs> Ernest and I were down in Florida swampland scavenging for... Sir, I can leave you to take it from here. Mm. Sounds good. Thank you, officer. Mm. Ernest, come along now. You'll be cleaning grout from the rain gutter for a week thanks to that transgression. The police officer gets in his car and drives off. I'm stunned by how cool Robert was just there. Thanks. I want to say Richard. Ouch. Uh -huh. Don't mention it, Hemingway. Got in trouble plenty of times in my life. Just trying to do my good deed for the day. Will you buy me e-liquid if I give you $20? Child, I will end you. Uh -huh. Hey, Xander, will you walk Ernest home with me? Sure. Uh -huh. Ernest runs ahead, presumably so he won't be seen with us, which is the thing I think kids do. He reminds me a lot of myself when I was his age. Uh -huh. Well, maybe I wasn't as dumb. Seems like he tortures his dad. Hey. Seems like he tortures just about everybody. He even stole your wallet. What? No, he didn't. I pat my back pocket. I pat the rest of my pockets. He stole my wallet. Mm. Why are you doing this to yourself? I... What? Huh. Robert points at my tubs of ice cream. One of them's for Amanda. Uh -huh. I have no qualms with the quantity of ice cream you've purchased. It's a perfectly respectable amount of ice cream. It's the quality I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You work hard, Xander. You're a good dad. Don't you think you deserve top shelf ice cream? But these are on sale. Oh. If you're going to treat yourself, go big or go home. Real vanilla bean, real pistachio. You deserve it. Oh. We arrive at the cul-de-sac, and Ernest runs into his home. Mm -hmm. That boy is the reason I don't... <laughs> Fuck. That boy is the reason we don't have prizes in cereal anymore. Hey. Catch you around, Xander. Robert tosses me a, my wallet. I catch it with a surprised look on my face. I stole it back. Mm. Keep it in your front pocket or use a chain like back in your Scott A's. How does he know? Smell you later. See ya, Robert. I'll go, uh, I go back inside my home, ready to spend the rest of the night with two tubs of ice cream and also Amanda. So... Welcome. All right. You've got dads. Last date. No. Oh, Ames texted me. Texting Ames. Hold on. So like, so Ames told me that this gets emotional, and I'm just like, I don't really remember it being that emotional, but... All right, let me wait a minute for her to respond, because she's at work. I'm hoping she's going to get out of work, so the waifu can be in stream. 
Well, I do like this last emotional date. Right, I'm going to assume she's at work. All right. Well, Ames, this YouTube recording is for you anyway, so. Last date. Let's go. You know what they say about third dates? They get pretty serious. You might not have time to browse dad book for a while. Are you ready? Let's save and continue. Last date, let's go. I haven't spoken to Robert since that night we drove out to his thinking spot. He seemed unusually somber then. Like, more so than usual. Uh, more so than the usual amount of somber that Robert is. Which is already a lot. I've been thinking about him and I hope he's doing okay. But I've been a little reluctant to reach out to him. Ames... Xander. Hey, Xander. Guess who's getting their drink on tonight? I take a look at my dad book messages. There's a flurry of them from Robert. Guess it's you. <laughs> Almost also me, but mostly you. I type back I type back to Robert. Robert, buddy, tonight we ride. Yeah. Meet me at Jim and Kim's at 8 p.m. Not that I'm unappreciative, but I think this is the first time that Robert's given me more than an hour's warning before hanging out. Amanda! Amanda pops her head into the hallway. Music I don't recognize blaring from her room. Hmm. What's up? I'm hanging out with Robert later tonight. Okay, cool. Robert, who is my friend. I have friends. I'm happy for you, Dad. People enjoy my company, Amanda. Ugh. Dad, I am so happy for your continued development as a human being. What are you listening to? Sad shit. I don't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> Amanda? Lang. You know what? You're an adult now. I gave it an earnest effort for all 18 years of your life. Go forth and swear. Fuck yeah! I really hope I don't regret that. Let Amanda say censored. Hamilton outside the door. Amanda goes back into her room and turns up the volume to her sad shit. It's real emo hours here. I put on my going out coat and walk over to Jim and Kim's. I spot Robert leaning up against the brick wall, smoking a cigarette. As I get closer, I realize that he looks a little different. Cleaner, I guess. Oh. It actually seems like he combed his hair and his clothes are less wrinkled than usual. Hey. Hey. You took a shower for me? I'm working on my relationship with existence. We both stand there for a second and don't say anything. Robert finishes his cigarette and abruptly goes inside. I follow him. By the time I get inside, Robert's already at the bar ordering two whiskeys. I spot a booth in the back and claim it for us. Robert slides in and hands me a glass. To you. Here's to your continued existence. We clink whiskeys. Oh, we got we got the fucking we got all the emojis. And I watch him sip his, rather than his traditional approach of slamming the whiskey back as quickly as possible. So what's the plan for tonight? Hit some other bars, maybe grab some pizza. I think that'll kill us some time before we burn down that old abandoned house in the woods. It's Oh, fuck. It's definitely not as fun if it's abandoned. Huh? Man uh, Mandy. Mary pops over the back of the booth, a glass wine in her hand. She hands Robert she punches Robert in the shoulder. Where's my phone call? Hey. Sorry. Figured you were busy sinking your teeth into some poor sap. I am. He's right over here. I look around the booth to see a guy sitting across from her. He waves meekly. Ugh. You're replacing me with the new kid? Mary, I could never replace you, whether I want to or not. Mary leaves her booth and slides in next to Robert. The guy she was sitting with looks mildly relieved. She eyes Robert's clean, pressed clothes and up and down suspiciously. What? You got a court date coming up? He looks handsome. I think he cleans up nicely. Pump the brakes, kid. I blush a little. Seriously, though, what's up with you? Robert stares down at his drink, suddenly looking serious. It's... Pappy. Doctor says it's cirrhosis of the liver. I told that old bag of bones to quit it with the sauce, but all it's all he's ever known, especially since Ma's gone. That's why I invited you out tonight. Just don't want to be alone. Oh, come on. Sandra, don't be an asshole. You know the one thing Robert doesn't joke about is his pappy. Whoops. They're giving him two months. I gotta help him straighten out his affairs. Robert, I'm so sorry. Robert takes a long look at his whiskey. Eyeing it in the dim of the in the dim glow of the bar's lights. I look at his life, then I look at mine. And I know history is just doomed to repeat itself. 
Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's retired with his new girlfriend at Uncle Poco. They watched the sunset every didn't they didn't he say in the last date they retired in Florida with his mom? Prob they watched the sunset every night, probably screw like donkeys. I wait aren't rabbits the one who screw a lot? Oh sorry. Didn't realize you were an expert on which animals screw a lot. Ugh. Please stop saying the word screw. Robert finishes his drink and slides it away from him. He gets up out of the booth. Me and Xander are gonna hit the bricks. You coming with? Mary casts one last glance at the sad sap she's been hunting down. Hunting and downs the rest of her wine in one gulp. Mm. This place is dead anyway. Oh. Ah. We exit the bar and find the typically empty streets filled with a small crowd of people. At the front is a guy with a really deliberate attitude and a bad posture. He carries a lantern that he shines up at his face for dramatic effect. What's going on? Looks like it's one of those walking tour uh, ghost tours. They do that in this part of town all the time. I've always wanted to do one of these. Mm. You know all of the stories are fake, right? Xander's fake. What's good? <laughs> Pretty much all my stories are fake. Xander is fake. This is research. Robert makes a beeline towards the back of the group. He turns around when he knows I'm not following him. Come on. We can't just crash it, can we? Don't be such a square, Xander. Just act like you belong. Robert sidles up to the tour group. I reluctantly fall into step behind him. Well, here goes nothing. Oh, my fuck. Oh, no, it's this guy. Hey, hey. It was in this place in, 19, uh, in 1694 that the most infamous witch trials were held. To date, we don't know if the people burned at the stake were actually witches, but it is widely reported that their ghosts still haunt this hapless dive bar to this very day. Mm. It was actually 1692. That's the good stuff. What? And the site was over by the coffee shop down the road. Coffee spoon. I'm sorry, who are you? Daniel McSturgis, ghost historian. <laughs> Daniel McSturgis, ghost historian. And this is my colleague, Dr. Contemporary reference. Let's see what he got. Dr. Baba Duke. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Baba Duke, paranormal investigator extraordinaire. We're touring America's most haunted locations as research for our new book. Uh -huh. You may have seen our guest cameo on Paranormal House Hunters Extreme Edition. A couple of people in the group start nodding. Man, Robert's good at this. I'm so sad. <laughs> I, uh, are you guys part of this group? I don't remember you at the first stop. We like to keep a low profile. Easier to catch ghosts that way. Hey, sailor. They've definitely been here. I've been standing next to them the whole time. Thank you, random lady who I do not know. Mm -hmm. As I was saying, the epicenter of paranormal activity can be found at the coffee spoon over there. The man who runs it has been plagued by haunting since he signed the lease. Damn near driven him mad. Mm -hmm. But whatever you want to say is cool, I guess. It's your tour. Hey. Man, didn't know that about Matt. Oh my god, he's being sarcastic, you goof. Wait, Robert's making this up. Good God. The rest of the tour group listen intently to Robert's every word. I think the tour guy can tell he's losing the group. He's seeming to get... He seems to be getting flustered. Thank you for your contribution and knowledge, Mr. McSturgis. Let's move on to the next haunted location. Robert, Mary, and I follow the group down the street. That tour guide shirt is cool. Yeah, everyone in the group gets one if we make it to the final location. I turn to Robert and grab him by the shoulder. I need that t-shirt. Well, guess we're in this for the long haul then. Just follow my lead, don't arouse too much suspicion, and we'll have cool ghost shirts in no time. Hey. Hey. A group arrives at an old, decrepit, colonial-style house. All right. A quick pause on the tour. My name's Quinn, but most people on the ghost tour circuit call me Tour Master Quinn. I'm a DJ, trivia master, and a part-time actor. <laughs> bang, bang. I do private ghost hunting events, birthday parties, MC bar mitzvahs. And perform traditional vaudeville mime work. Oh my god. Tormaster Quinn gives out a headshot. Gives out headshots to all of us. His resume is on the back. What is his resume? Hmm. Stage combat experience. Anyway, here's a little bit of the history for all of you. This was the house of noted American author Dorothy Pembridge, whose, po whose prose was wildly popular in the late 19th century. It was in the attic of this very ho home where she wrote such classes as The Diaries of a Victorian Mistress, Lady Fitzwilliam Courtship, and The Ghost of Sea Captain Reginald Barclay. She unfortunately died of consumption shortly after the turn of the century, but several people have reported that on some nights you can see a light from the attic. Where the ghost of Miss Pembridge continues her work, on her latest bestseller. I could guess you could say that she was consumed by her work. No reaction from the... Oh my god, Brian. 
No reaction from the crowd. This guy needs to work on his dad jokes. <laughs> Actually, consumption is the popular cover-up. Little known fact, it was a murder-suicide. I'm, I'm pretty sure she died of consumption. Mm. Sure, sure. And we definitely didn't hire Stanley Kubrick to elaborately fake the moon landing. That's the watered-down censored version they, virgin? version they teach you in school. But if you can't handle the real story, I understand. It's not for the faint of heart. Can we? I think everyone would much rather hear what this world-renowned ghost historian has to say. Right, everybody? The group murmurs in agreement. This is a topic we cover extensively in our book. Dr. Babadook, would you care to tell this story? Uh, go somewhere now. In the 19th century, Dorothy Pembridge was credited for protecting New York City with potentially world-ending paranormal forces. Despite her success, her ragtag group of ghost hunters... Oh, my God. However, after, le this is, mm, however, after learning the ghost of Vigo the Carpathian has taken an interest in her son, her and her ghost-busting friend launched a message to de mission to defeat the ghost and once again save New York City. Mm. Hey, isn't that the plot, too? Nope, it's not. <laughs> the tour guide sees this as an opportunity to take the group back and address this with some razzle-dazzle. Ha-ha! What an interesting story. Now, I just want everyone to know that the next location is extremely terrifying. If anyone thinks they can't handle it, feel free to excuse yourself. Is it my house? <laughs> All right. I'm bored. Mary turns to a young-looking guy on his at his phone and taps him on the shoulder. Hey, kid. Fancy buying a gallon of drink? I'm 19. Only if the bar is haunted. Honey, I can show you the most haunted place in town. I think you can exercise your demons, if that's what you're looking for. Hey. Don't write checks your dick can't catch, kid. Uh, uh, I need to take a screenshot of this or just a photo of the screen because I don't know which screen that screenshot button is assigned to but that was amazing that was amazing oh god his eyes go wide Mary salutes me and Robert she suddenly pulls me into a hug and murmurs into my ear when you've known Robert as long as I have you know something's you know fuck when you've known Rob for as long as I have, you know when something's wrong. Keep an eye on, uh, keep an eye on him for me tonight, okay? Sure, Mary. Good man. Mary pats me on the back and pulls away. She takes the guy's hand and leads him down the street. Mm. Take it sleazy, fellas. God help that poor soul. Mary or the kid? Oh. Both. Oh. Our last stop. This burial ground is a, such a hotbed of hor uh, horrifying paranormal activity that I'm not even sure where to begin. There's the wailing ghost of the wharf man, the vampire of Maple Bay, the children of the moonlight. What about the Dover ghost? The Dover ghost! By this point, the tour guide is clearly irritated with us. What about it? Oh, nothing. I just think it would be a crime to come all this way out to this, uh, all the way out to this cemetery, the actual origin of one of New England's most notorious paranormal entities. Okay, so we're in New England. I thought we were in, like, Seattle. Uh, and not even mention the infamous Dover ghost. That's not a real thing. That is absolutely not a real thing. I think someone needs to brush up on their paranormal history. I know tons about paranormal history. I know every ghost story in this area. I can guarantee there's one you don't know. Robert looks over at me and smiles. Would you folks care to hear the tale of how Baba Duke and I met? Baba Duke. <laughs> no! Move your mouse. Yeah, you're right. It's on his face. No, that's just uh, that's a beauty mark on Robert's face. Sad Master Quill. <laughs> Sad master. Okay, fine. Tell your story. Well, it was a dark and stormy night. I wasn't always a paranormal investigator. Way back when, I was just a... I'm going to save because I actually care about my choices. Uh, Traveling grifter. Yeah. Moving from town to town, always looking for my next mark. Me. It wasn't an easy life, but I had fun. Taken from the rich, given to the poor, actually. Also taken from the poor. I had a shaky moral foundation. I happened upon a quiet town in Maple Bay quite by accident. But little did I know, this city had a dark side. Huh. Now, about the same time, I was just starting out as an apprentice to a rather famous ghost hunter who, has an, who was an old family friend of mine. I carried the equipment, operated the EV, EVP machine, all that. Wait. Mm -hmm. Yes? Who... Who was that famous ghost hunter? I... Well, I don't like to name drop, but Georgia Mathers. The tour group gasps. No. Georgia Mathers? She's a legend. You know her? Uh, knew her. Amazing woman. Died mysteriously. Miss you, Georgie. Uh. 
Anyway, we were in Maple Bay investigating some reports of strange lights and sounds coming from the cemetery late at night. Now, we had been warned by the old crib keeper that this place was highly dangerous, but Georgia was never one to shy away from an adventure. We camped out in the center of the cemetery for three nights straight. We endured your so-called wailing watch, man. Wailing ghost of the wharf, man. Whatever. Your stupid vampire was just a teenager in a mask, but the Dover ghost. Man. Tell him, Baba Duke. So there I was. Barbecue sauce all over my titties again. All right. So there I was, just walking back to my hotel after a long day of... Working a couple short cons. Classic pigeon drop scams. Putting out feelers for a rip deal. I was going to steal a baby. Probably would have made me rich. I found myself walking past this very cemetery. Now, I was never a very superstitious man, but something seemed... Off. I could hear some sort of commotion happening deep within the graveyard. I felt compelled to investigate. Uh -huh. And thank God you did. Georgia and I were conducting a seance in the mausoleum. At first, things were pretty normal. But after about an hour, everything went back uh, went south. Playing back the EVP meter, we were able to hear a single word. Huh? Run. Oh. The air suddenly went cold. Something was very, very wrong. I just knew we weren't alone. We started to hear this faint, distant, scraping noise. Like something being dragged across the ground. It got louder and louder until it was deafening. Some kind of demented howl. Mm -hmm. And then I felt it. Someone. Something. Grabbing my ankle. Robert has the whole, cro uh, whole crowd hook, line, and sinker. You could hear a pin drop. I've only cried twice in my life. Once was at the birth of my daughter. The other was when that thing started dragging me. I wasn't sure where it was taking me, but I kn but knew it was no place I wanted to go. I was sure I was going to die. The moment I crossed the gate into the cemetery, I heard this god-awful screeching. I ran to the mausoleum just in time to see a man being pulled across the floor by... God, to this day, the mere thought of it ties my stomach into knots. It looked like a man, but like... I glanced at Robert. Like someone who didn't know what a man was supposed to look like. Tried to put one together. The arms were too long. The eyes glowed red. It was like a walking shadow. What did I do? What any good person would do? I lunged for... Shoot, what was his fake name again? Oh, fuck. What is his name again? Hold on. Thing. Oh yeah, it was Daniel, okay. Daniel. I grabbed his hand and entered a tug of war. I grabbed his hand and entered into a tug of war with the most unholiest of forces. Uh -huh. I thought I was going to be torn in half, but I had a, but I had God on my side. The pocket Bible I always kept on me fell out of my shirt pocket, and to this day I can remember what the passage it opened up to. Fucking Ecclesiastes 12.7 Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. I have no idea where Robert pulled that verse from. With a horrifying growl, the entity finally... Relented. Daniel and I collapsed onto the ground. Exhausted. We were both covered in blood. Mm. That damn creature crawled into my clawed into my chest. Got me real good. Had to get 16 stitches. Robert pulls down the collar of his shirt to reveal a long, wicked scar across his peck. Oh. And that's how I got this scar. I want to know how I got these scars. Hey. I follow Georgia Mathers to the end of the earth. We faced exorcisms, demons, poltergeists that threw our equipment across the room, but I had never seen Georgia so scared. She was never the same after that. And neither was I. Watching what happened to Daniel and Georgia shook my faith. But I came out of that experience a better man and a better friend. And we've been brothers ever since. The tour group gives us a round of applause as Daniel, er, Robert and I share an emotional hug. As he embraces me, I can smell the cologne on his neck. Wow, Robert does clean up good. I find myself lingering a little too long on the hug. The tour guide seems to have bought it. Even he's wiping a tear from his eyes. Thank you, thank you. It's an honor to be able to share our story. By the book. No, wait, hold on. Sorry. Taryn is messaging me. Um, 
Be sure to watch out for our book. <clears throat> Paranormal Excursions of the Supernatural Ice Road Ghost Truckers. <laughs> Robert has to suppress a laugh at that one. Well, I think you both definitely earned your t-shirts. The tour guide hands us the coveted t-shirts. He then slips us both his business cards and leaves them close. Okay. If you guys are ever in need of a professional actor, balloon animal artist, Elvis impersonator, or nude model, cool. please don't hesitate to contact me. Mm. You got it, buddy. After a couple of tourists take selfies with us, we split away from the group and walk home. They're going to be sad when they Google us. That was incredible. <laughs> I really can't believe they bought all of that. I didn't know you had it in you. Xander, uh, excuse me, Dr. Babadook. Mm. That bit about the pocket Bible was ace. Although, given the Dover ghost glowing red eyes was a big cliche, and the Cooper conspiracy theory bit wasn't hey. all part of the character. Well, we got the t-shirts out of it. We arrive in front of Robert's house. Uh. Want to have a drink? Let's go. Is that even a question? Robert, how long have you known me for? Do you really think I would turn down the opportunity to share a fine alcoholic beverage with my treasured friend and accomplice, Robert Bobbert Smalls? Bobbert? Bob <laughs> Butler? Let's go. If you ever call me Bobbert again, I will kick you right in the shins. Both of them. Then you can ex then you can expect an angry phone call from my orthopedist in the morning. Bobbert. Robert just laughs and starts unlocking his door. My shins live to die another day. I... Uh, Robert leads me inside. I can't help but think about what Mary said to me. I call a friend Bobbert. Have you watched Bob uh, the Butler? Good, Actually, good movie. It's a Tom Green movie that is also a Disney movie, which is weird, but pretty good. Uh, I can't help but think about what Mary said to me. Robert did seem a little bit off, but that completely disappeared when we were joking around with the ghost tour. Oh, well, get Disney Plus and watch Bob the Butler. Don't. Just find it online. I don't know. He's hard to read. While well, I'm thinking, I hear claws skittering across the floor. Oh god, it's a spitball. I'm about to be torn to shreds. I shut my eyes tight and brace for impact. Betsy, hey! Be nice! I don't feel anything, but tiny paws scratching at my shoes. I open my eyes. Betsy? Mm -hmm. Robert's dog jumps away from me, running around in circles and sniffing Robert's leg. He pats her on the head. Aw. Hey, that's not a pit bull. That's a kim... <laughs> I tried to say cutest and dumbest, and it came out. I was like, cutest, and that's dis no. That is the cutest, dumbest Boston Terrier I've ever seen. Betsy, you're not a pit bull, and you weren't taken by the Dover Ghost. Betsy's made of tougher stuff than that, ain't you, girl? Rolls over on the floor for some well-deserved belly rubs. Uh, oh, excuse me. I just keep a picture of a large pit bull on my wall in case of emergencies, comedic emergencies. We make our way to Robert's living room. For a quiet man with arguably the oldest pickup truck that can be legally driven, his place is amazing. There are sleek modern appliances throughout the room with a big flat screen TV mount on the wall. He has shelves upon shelves of DVDs. Guess he wasn't lying about being really into cinema. He pours us both glasses of whiskey from a well-stocked bar in the corner while Betsy curls up on a pile of cushions. So, how did you really get that scar? And don't tell me you got it fishing for the Alaskan king crabs in the Bering Sea. Allie, sorry I didn't know they were crabbing or something. You trained me too well. Robert laughs and takes a sip of his drink. Mm. My daughter and I were riding our bikes. I hit a rock, flew over the handlebars, and then we went to the hospital. That's it. I... Not a very interesting story. I never heard you talk about your daughter. Well, I have one. Mm. That's her. He points at a picture on the wall of a very serious little girl with dark eyes. Yep, that's definitely Robert's daughter. How old is she? Uh, 25? 26? Not too sure. Does she live around here? Uh -huh. No. Val lives back home in Brooklyn. Works at some news media online magazine. Makes buckets, though. I don't know. He suddenly seems real serious. I probably shouldn't press him about I... it. You like Santana? Yes. Hey. Great. Robert puts on Santana, then takes a seat on the couch next to me. He suddenly drowns his drink in one gulp. Hey. Are you alright? Ooh, good music, though. Oh. Robert leans in and kisses me. Ooh, let's go! The taste of whiskey burning my lips. I'm surprised at first, but slowly relaxed his arms. He pulls away slightly, his lips barely brushing against my mouth. I am now. I can't say anything. At best, managing a sigh. Robert leans in again, uh, again, kissing me harder. He pulls my bottom lip between his teeth and bites lightly. That's what I do! No, that's my thing! Sliding a hand under my shirt, my heart pounds in my chest as he lies us both down on the couch. He kisses a trail down my neck, his teeth grazing my skin. Oh my god, we're getting it! I, I just, wait, it's not that. Robert bites down and I have to stifle a moan. Stop, 
Robert stiffen stiffens up a bit and pulls away. No biting? No, no, I'm more than okay with that. Something's up. Robert runs a hand through his hair and looks away. I'm fine. I've just been kind of stressed out. Tired, not a big deal. Push it. Listen, I want this as badly as you do, but I know something's wrong. I need to make sure that you're okay. Robert stares at the ground. Crabs. Alright, hold on. You don't know me that well, Xander. I'm not a good person. He takes a deep breath. Mm. I spent my whole life only talking and talking and talking, and now here I am, an old broken man sitting on top of a pile of everything I've ever taken. Alone. But I want to know you. You don't have to keep hiding behind fake stories and acting like you don't have feelings. Huh. It's... He sighs heavily. I don't know. It's, it's Val. She's visiting tomorrow. She, she wants to patch things up. Are you? Uh. I'm sorry, but is this a bit? No. When was the last time you saw her? Three. Four, I think. Months? Uh. Years. I sit up straight. What's up, Yaren? Yeah, we're just playing through Robert's storyline. Jesus, Robert, what happened between you two? Oh. I don't want to talk about it. Robert and I sit in silence, neither of us wanting to look at each other, both of us unsure of what to do next. Oh. Fine. Hmm. Things were already bad between us. I cared about her. I always did. Things just got in the way. And before I knew it, she was leaving for college, wanting nothing to do with me. Marilyn and I moved out here to settle down. We thought it would help to get away from all the distractions, all the money, the drinking. But temptation gets to you. I tried to be better, but I just couldn't. Xander sits up straight, but this game is gay. <laughs> and then, uh, how are you, Mr. Mark? I'm doing good. Doing good. Just want to do a stream, a little, little break from Death Stranding. Um, and, you know, Ames has said nothing but good shit about uh, Robert's storyline. And I wanted to see what it's about and see why it's so sad. So here we are. How are you doing? How's your day? And then the accident changed everything. I think about every day. I think, uh, I think every day about how she must have died hating me. I never became the better man that she wanted me to be. The one she always saw in me. She was the last thread Val and I had connecting us together. I didn't know that when I lost my wife, I was going to lose my daughter too. Robert. I spent so much time chasing after things I thought were going to make me happy. And that ruined my only real chance at happiness. And now my wife is dead. My daughter hates me. And then I convinced myself that this, he gestured vaguely in my direction, was going to make me happy. And why do I even try anymore? Oh, God damn. Okay, yeah, this is making my eyes sweat. My day is okay? Good, because you might get sad. I'm so sorry. I don't know how hard it is to. Mm. No, you don't. How could you possibly know how this feels? You did everything right. Your daughter loves you. You're a good person. I was a terrible husband, and I'm an even worse father. I have no idea why she's even bothering to contact me now. I know I'm just going to fuck it up like I always do. I'm broken. I shouldn't even go. Shit. Robert puts his head in his hands. Uh, tell him when he'll fucking walk away. Let's be a dick. Uh, tell him what he needs to hear. Nothing's going to change until you do. Robert pauses. He looks at me. There's a lot of things in life that I regret. That I wish I could take back or do over, and it hurts so much to know that I can't. But what I can do, what you have the privilege of doing tomorrow morning, is to wake up and try to be a better person than you were the day before. Things aren't going to fix themselves tomorrow or the next day. Patching things up with Val isn't going to solve all of your problems either. But nothing is going to change if you don't. 
and if you can't love anyone else until you, and you can't love anyone else until you stop hating yourself. And you're right, I don't know you that well. But you have the same capacity for good that we all have and I know you can find it. Val is giving you a chance. Don't waste it. But Robert, listen to me. It's going to be okay. But I lean over and embrace Robert, pulling him in as tightly as I can. He buries his hands on my shoulder, hugging me back. It's going to be okay. I place a hand on his on the back of his head and shook his hair. He shudders, then sobs. And I realize that he's crying. Thank you. Oh. Ho, ho. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we stay there for a while, holding each other. We both adri eventually drift off to sleep. Man, yeah, that's sad. Uh, man, is this everyone's wife either, like, die or just up and leave them? Like, what the fuck? Matt's wife died. Fucking his died. Shit's sad. Date complete. Whiskey all the way up. We got an A. Need a bigger boat. It's because I got the fucking... I got one of the responses wrong, but whatever. Knife Dad. It's rude to ask people about their mysterious hand tattoos. If only I knew that. Back then. Woo, I think I have everything finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's her car in the driveway. Okay, gotta act natural. I'm snuggling with Clarence. Nice. Amanda walks through the door with a sp suspicious look on her face. Hey, Dad. Off to a good start. Hmm. Something fishy? Rats. Sorry, sweetie, it's the feds. That's the life. Uh, that life of crime is finally catching up to you. I tried to send him in a different direction, but even I'm no match for the power and funding of the U.S. government. <sighs> well, if they think they're going to take me alive, they've got another thing coming. I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little surprise for you. Aww. Yeah, I can tell. You're very bad at lying. Amanda, my dear, would you care to, to join me in the kitchen? Father, it would fill my heart with glee. Ama I lead Amanda over to the kitchen table where uh, a present lies under a tablecloth. It's nothing special, but I just wanted to give you a little something. You graduated high school last week, and I know you told me not to make a big deal about it, but... Aw, huh. oh, Dad, you... I dramatically whip the cloth off the table. Amanda's jaw drops. No way! I figured you probably won't be able to get a cable... To get cable in your dorm... Oh, fuck. I figured you probably won't be able to get cable in the dorm, so I thought it might be nice to take a piece of home with you. A DVD box set of long-haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers! I am impressed that I said that all in one go. This is all 19 seasons! Oh my god, how much was that? And bonus material, including commentary with actual ghosts featured on the show. Yep. Dad, I love this. Thank you. She gives me a big hug. I'm glad you like it. Hey, you want to hang out with me in the backyard for a bit? Toss the old pigskin or something? Huh. Totally. I follow Amanda to the back door. Yeah. Surprise! You told me not to make a big deal, but you seem to have forgotten that my entire mission in life is to make a big deal out of your accomplishments. So consider this your graduation party. Surprise. Dad, everyone's here. Well, yeah, all the people I dated. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah, everyone wanted to come and support you. Yeah. Is that a mac and cheese bar? Sure is. Fully customizable, down to the type of mac. And there's ice cream cake. The good kind with the crunchies in the middle. Yay. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just go have fun with your pals, all right? I'm so proud of you, Amanda. Amanda smiles and runs to her friends. I should make the rounds and make sure everyone's having a good time. But first, mac and cheese. I need mac and cheese right now. I need mac and cheese in my stomach. I walk over to Mary, who's having a lively conversation with Amanda. Listen, kid. You're going to need some real-life skills out there if you're going to make it out on these streets. I'm going to college. Hey. Same thing. Look, I know you're not old enough to drink. Huh? Right. And I know you're smart enough not to drink until you're of legal age. Uh-huh. Hmm. But hypothetically, if you were to drink, I'd behoove you, it'd behoove you to drink a glass of water between rounds. Mary, she's 18. And she's my daughter. She fucking knows what the fuck is up. Got it. Ugh. Hypothetically. Mm. And if you wake up with a headache, all you gotta do is take a jar of pickles and drink the pickle juice. You're gonna be fine. What's going on here? Ugh. Girl talk. Mary turns back to Amanda. Ah. Now let me tell you how to deal with a bad roommate. First thing to know, you get straight A's if they die during the semester. Mary! You Relax. It's a myth. Hey. Supposedly. Against my better judgment, I leave them be. Hmm. 
I don't think I recognize that girl by the snack table. I should go say hello. Is that... That's... Robert's daughter? What the hell? Hi. I don't think we've met. Oh, we've met. Years ago. And I'm here for my revenge. Oh yeah, definitely Robert's daughter. You're Robert's kid, aren't you? Huh? Spot on. I guess that makes you Xander, huh? Yeah, it's nice to meet you. I'm glad Robert brought you along. He promised there would be free food, so that's kind of hard to pass up. And... Look, I don't know you, but can I get real with you for a sec? My old man's a real close book, you know? Me and him, we got a long way to go. You don't erase decades of neglect in a week, but you can sure get tired of staying angry about them. That kind of bitterness, it poisons you, I think. I'm too young for that. Anyway, lately he's been better, a lot better. And between him shaving for once and how much he talks about you, I get the feeling you have something to do with it. So thanks. Robert means a lot to me. I'm glad he's getting better. Just keep an eye on him while I'm not around, okay? Yeah, Yaren, right? The legal drinking age used to be 18, but then it got changed to 21 for some political bullshit. Or else. What? I'm kidding. Or am I? I don't know why I'm like this. I think it runs in the family. Amanda trots up to the conversation. Mm. Hey, I love your necklace. And your hair. Mm. And just, geez, your whole vibe is so cool. Vibe check. She passes. Thanks. I like your jacket. My girlfriend collects pins too. Robert's daughter is at least gay. Maybe bye. Oh, this is my daughter, Amanda. Amanda, this is Robert's daughter, Val. Nice to meet you. I heard you're a photographer. Hmm. Aspiring photographer? I'm going to school for it. You take pictures? Yes. Hmm? Then you're a photographer. Welcome to the biz. Val hands Amanda a business card. If you're ever looking for internships, shoot me an email. Anyway, I need to go make friends with that woman over there who's dual wielding wine glasses. Catch you later. <laughs> Joe, go! Val walks away. She's so cool. She gave me her business card. She touched my hand. Congrats. You just networked for the first time. I'm a regular business lady now. Quarterly projections, stock markets, synergy. While you're making a fortune as a businesswoman, I got to keep this party going. Catch you around, pops. How's your day going, Joko? How you been? Xander, Brian, you made it. Ha, huh, I don't pass up on a good Mac. What do you think of the party? It's not bad. Just not bad? Yeah, it's not bad. Don't let him bait you. Don't let him bait you. Thank you for the lovely compliment. Daisy trots up. Hi. Amanda's dad. Hey, Brian's daughter. See? See how that feels? This is a really great party. Thank you so much for inviting us. You're very welcome, tiny child who knows how to pay a compliment. Brian and I lock eyes. This isn't over. Hey, bro. Oh. Bro, this is a real rager. Taking in our older age into consideration. Yeah, we all hate Brian. I'm trying to be in bed at a reasonable hour tonight. Don't let me get too wild. Hey. Don't worry, dude. I'll keep an eye on your fruit punch intake. You know, I'm really glad we're bros again. Me too, dude. Briar and Hazel peek out behind Craig. Hi, little ones. Hello. Hiya. Thanks for all that ice cream cake. Oh. Wait, girls, how much of that did you eat? Briar ate four pieces. Ask any witness. No, I didn't. Hazel ate four pieces and wants to pin it on me because we look alike. I have your face. Nobody will ever believe you. Oh, boy. I'll, I'll let you guys figure this out. Good seeing you, Craig. Let's hang soon, yeah? Hey. Totally. Tell Amanda congrats for us. Ugh, looks like you've settled into this neighborhood quite nicely. I'm literally Satan. Yep, couldn't ask for a better cul-de-sac. <laughs> well, I'm glad. Hopefully we'll see you at more church events. We got a big schedule planned for the rest of the year. Sure thing, Joseph. And maybe if you aren't doing anything later, we could hang out sometime. No, fuck you. Fuck you. Uh, it used to be 16 for beer and wine and 18 for whiskey, vodka, and the harder stuff. Now it's 18 for everything. You have to see his story time. It explains a lot. Days have been awesome. I've been with the girlfriend. My trip, my hips hurt though after today's activities. Oh, oh, forest running. Okay. Well, Joko, for once you can't blame me this time. Yeah, that was, listen, you said my hips hurt from today's activities. That's, uh, that's a little, you know. Sure, Joseph. No, that'd be horrible. Well, see you later. It's November? Ah, da, 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 da. No, not November. Doesn't really. Come on. 
It's a fool's game. Hugo comes up to me with a plate of mac and cheese. Ah. The perfect cheddar to mac ratio. Beautiful work, Sander. Thanks, Hugo. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda going to dream school. I'm glad she turned it around for the finals. Me too. That scholarship money will really help. Amanda walks by and pretends not to see Hugo. Pew! Amanda, come say hi to your old teacher. Hey! Congratulations on graduating. I know you're going to do great things at art school. Pew pew! Haha, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Amanda starts to back away. Wait, I just realized that you're not my teacher anymore, so I don't have to be afraid of talking to you. You no longer hold power over me. Mm. You're right. Go forth, adult. I can no longer give you a detention. Yeah, I'm going to break anything I want, and there's nothing you can do about it. Are you still mad at uh are you still mad about the time I gave you detention for breaking my globe? Nope. Oh. And I'll have you know that the globe didn't fit uh even fit through the basketball hoop in the first place. So she'll fit into college just fine. Hey, hey man. Oh my god, it's the former uh, it's the former boo. It's it's the husbando. Mm. Hey man. Matt. Let me know when Amanda leaves for college. I'll have a fresh batch of right said banana bread ready for her. Thank you. I know she'll love that. Oh. What a splendid garden party. My deepest thanks for extending an invitation to my son and I. This ice buck cakes is divine. Yeah, thanks, dude. Good cake. Thanks for coming by. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat on our back porch step. The sun is setting and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Killer party, Pops. What can I say? I was inspired. So. Oh, Okay. Let me try to fake crying. Uh, I don't know why it was so funny to see her zoom across me. Oh, yeah, because it's like, pew! I take my Novembers very seriously. You trip, you take your triple ends very seriously. Yeah. Not. I also have something for you. For me? Why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but huh. growing up wasn't easy. But it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. Dad, you've been there for me through everything. There's been times in my life where you were my only friend. Hmm. I was really scared of going to college and being so far away from you. But I realized that everything you've done for me has been to prepare me for this. And I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am today without you. Don't cry. Don't cry. I swear to God, Xander, if you cry. You're the best dad. I love you. And I'm crying! Anyways, that was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. <laughs> Present time! Amanda hands me a tiny wrapped package. I tear the wrapping off to find a framed picture of me and Amanda. It's... It's us. Hmm. Kind of shocking all of our photo albums are just pictures of me, huh? I figured we needed at least one together before I leave. Amanda. Thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my life. Oh, you're such a talented artist, and you're going to fucking do amazing things, and don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Intellectual young woman, and I'm excited to see what the future holds for you. There you go. Knock him dead, kid. I obviously skipped it so I don't cry. Always do. Amanda and I share a hug. This is only the beginning, Pops. Plenty more memories for us down the road. Memories to make and stuff to break, right? Ugh. Oh, and I'm going to break so much stuff. Intentionally and unintentionally. You're probably going to have to pay for most of it. It would be my honor. Amanda hops up. Looks like someone's been waiting to talk to you. I glance over to the back of the yard where Robert is sitting on a bench beneath a cherry blossom tree. He smiles huh. at me. I'll leave you to it. Me and the Emmas are going to go eat ice cream. Pew pew. pew pew. Love you, Pops. Almost ran 30 miles yesterday from November. That. Oh, it's my youngest brother's birthday today. The one we are in want to put in a cage. Oh. Amanda runs off to join her friends. Also, weren't the Emmas like dicks to her? Kick them the fuck out of this house. Hashtag not much time zone. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Emma, what, uh, Allie, what the hell's with the... I thought there was a no Emma thing. Um, I take a seat next to Robert as the last guests make their way out of the party. Hey. 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 Robert gestures vaguely to the snack table. Good stuff. Yep. So... I had a chance to talk to Val. Hi. She physically threatened you? Yeah. Mm. That's my girl. She said you've been doing better. Oh. Trying to work on vices. I also showered today. We sit in silence for a moment. Mm. You know, every battle, uh, every battle, I fucked it up. Oh, okay, immersion ruin. You know, 
every day for me is a battle against my own self-destructive habits. But lately it's gotten a little easier. Thanks for talking some sense into me. It's hard to get things through my thick skull sometimes, but what you said that night actually helped. I'm glad. I like you, Xander. I like you a lot. I haven't felt this way about someone in a long time. I lean in and kiss him for a moment before you. I lean in and kiss him for a moment before he pulls away. Uh, I don't know. Mm. You're, you're special to me. Huh. But, oh, there it is. Oh, that was okay. I have some stuff I need to work on emotionally before I can get into anything romantic with you. You deserve better than who I am right now. I need to be on my own for a bit. Figure some things out. Of course. I think what you need right now is a friend. And I'm very happy to be that for you. Thank you. That means a lot to me. And if you're ever ready for more than that, you know where to find me. Mm -hmm. Let's go sometime. I would love that. I put my head on his shoulder and we watch the sun slowly dip below the horizon together. Ah! Alright, so that's the end. I don't remember that, but congrats on your brother. <laughs> congrats on the brother! <laughs> Dream Daddy Who's gonna be your dream? You like how I couldn't snap to the beat? Me too. And it's us. Alright, where's the sexy photo of Robert? Oh, look at that chest hair. It's hot. Brown man. What about brown man? Oh, yeah, Ray. Yeah, Ray voices Hugo. Well, I'm going to, Mark, bring me chips, please, because you love me. Well, I'm about to cook dinner for myself and my roommate right now, so sorry. Uh, so I'm going to wrap up here. Um, I'm also going to end the stream here because got to end it. See you, YouTube. Hope you enjoyed.